Welcome back, everybody. This is Mark 165. We're getting up there. Geeks chasing squirrels across the multiverse. My name is Greg. I am the Bat Daddy 52. And folks, I've had a really, really good day. I've got four new characters in Dice Throne. I've watched some really good movies. I've seen some really good trailers. I've watched some really good shows. And I'm here with my homeboy, one of my best friends my whole life. I mean, me and this guy go back to the NWO Wolfpack days, to the Power Rangers days, to the uh, Rogue Squadron days, like N64. Like, Ross, what's up, man? Dude, I, I get jealous every time when the show opens. I get to see Henry Cavill and his big old muscles. And I'm like, I keep working out. Why can't I look that big? But no, you're right, man. You, me. It's been years and we still got crap to talk about all the time. I think Henry Cavill is at that point. Like he is right at that edge of, I don't need steroids to bit to get this big, but he's about as big as you can get. He's about as big as you can get without using steroids to get bigger. Like I love the rock, but man, dude, I'm sorry. There's no way you're that big without juicing. Look, There's just just no way. It's not (laughs) that the rock doesn't look healthy. It's that Henry Cavill looks healthier. (laughs) Yeah, I think that's probably the best way to put it. No, um, dude, we got a lot of stuff to talk about this week, man. We had some awesome trailers for a movie that I don't know. Did you buy tickets? I know we talked about times. I think I bought them for Friday at four. I Friday think that's at what four. I had. Okay, yeah, I gotta go back and okay. double check. Cool. It's I been a hectic them. week, man. So I hear you. I hear you. Well, I, and you know, I'll pay you back for those, and I'll definitely take off work. And looking forward to going seeing Ant Man. But we've got the trailer for it. We're going to talk about. We also got the trailer for Mandalorian season three, which I'm not going to lie, I didn't watch until about. 30 minutes ago all week long. I've let it go and I've heard people talking about it and heard all this stuff. And I just didn't watch it. And I was like, I'm gonna watch it right before the show. See what happens. Um, and then we got, we got things to talk about. I didn't know about this, but you mentioned a teaser for invincible season two, which <laughs> invincible season one was absolutely amazing. Everybody I've talked to that doesn't like animation. I told them, give it a chance, get through the first episode and then tell me what you think. And they've loved it. So yep. I'm excited about that one. On top of that, what else we got? Bad Batch, Jack Ryan, Everything, Everywhere, All at Once was an awesome movie, and The Last of Us, which is the grand, the finale for tonight. So let's get into it, man. Uh, we're starting with trailers, right? Because we really yeah, don't have much news. Okay. Trailers 20... always come at the beginning. That's the way I see it. There you go. I like that. I like that. Well, I'm going to go with the first one I have here, Mandalorian Season 3. So I'm going to play it in the background, and then we will just uh, discuss how excited we are for this season. So, you going to start. You just watched it. So what what kind of stood out to you right in the beginning? Uh I saw lightsabers. Yeah, um multiple thing. lightsabers and I've heard things online about them redoing another rendition of uh Order 66. So hmm. um I, I'm if they are okay, I'm interested to see that, but I don't know if that's exactly what they're going for, but um Beyond that, man, it's just awesome to see Mando. I love the fact they're going to Mandalore. Um, I'm not going to lie. I love Mandalorian, but I'm more excited for the Ahsoka series because I've just finished Rebels. <laughs> so, like, sure. right now, my mindset is more in that. I'm sure that when I get into Mandalorian, I'll be right back into it and be, like, so excited for it. And I am excited for it. But just right now, I'm I'm thinking more, like, I want to see Sabine and Ahsoka and Ezra, like, because because I've just come out of that world. So... But I'm I'm loving it so far. Uh, what is it like? Uh, it's only like a week and a half, two weeks, right? Before it comes out. Oh no, it comes out the first of March. First of March. Okay, so we got a month yeah. and a week. Okay, I was a month off. But all right, am I sharing this? I'm not even. No, I'm not. Here we go. Here we go. This and this and this. There we go. So I like the I like seeing all the different colors of the Mandalorian costumes here. I love seeing these ones that look more like uh, Bo-Katan and, and uh, Sabine, you know. Oh, the night owls with the the wispier, they call it the Y or whatever it is, not the like the Mandalorian T. Not the T, yeah. Yeah. Are we to understand, based on the dialogue of this trailer, that he is trying to teach this Grogu in the ways of being a, Mandalo- being a Mandalorian? Yeah, man. Uh, what you had in... Uh... The book of Boba Fett was him make a choice. And so when he made that choice, it was to not stay with Luke. And so by making that choice, what is Mando to do except for, you know, like train him, basically take him on as a Mando Padawan. Do you think we get some like Grogu baby, you know, armor? 
one thing. I, do you remember that picture I sent you a while back? Like, like oh, oh <laughs> way while back. Hmm. It was got to be more specific than that. Yeah. Him decked out in uh, some Mandalorian armor. No, I don't I'll have to remember pull that. Pull it up. Okay, I have to pull it up and then let you see it. But uh, I don't know. I mean, there's a whole bunch of interesting takes you could go with this. So it's really cool that they are bringing a force sensitive character. You know, a child still still not walking uh, for the most part. And so here we have the mixture of Star Wars lore, you know, things that don't really feel like they should go together, but are going together. Mm -hmm. uh, it is going to be fun to see how they do it. I think that, um, you know, like I think they're going to, was it Book of Boba Fett? They did the flashback for Grogu in that same scene with Luke and everything. Um, I think that's kind of going to be what you're, looking at with the lightsabers what's more intriguing is the the actual doors that they have look like someone is trying to either cut through them or almost like something reminiscent of phantom menace where you have you know qui-gon melting the door it had kind of phantom menace vibes especially with the different color lightsabers too you don't see purple lightsabers very often except for in yeah. that that prequel area or type era so yeah. Um, so Adam asked in the chat, uh, does Grogu ever does Grogu ever talk at some point? Uh, Dude, I don't talk. I, I mean, it depends on how long the season this series goes. If it's going to go two more seasons, then maybe, or even this season it doesn't necessarily matter. If it's two more seasons, but how much they want to develop that character? Like, is this a Baby Yoda? Because I'm thinking about it. Like, I'm watching him in this little flotation device he has, which is pretty cool. I would love to have that. It's like a rascal, but not. <clears throat> Why wouldn't Yoda just use that? It's faster yeah. than walking. Like, like he had his little levitating, like his little levitating chair thing that he sat on. Uh, if you yeah. remember, in, was it episode two? I think. I just feel like if you're I using that as an adult two. of whatever race there are, it's kind of like Professor X style. Like that's that's the message you're sending. You know, like, he should float around like Magneto. You know, basically just like with his hands. <laughs> yeah. like he's just holding right. stuff. Just like I am God. Watch me. Um, no, I think that, um, you know, in Tales of the Jedi, we just got Yaddle talking. And how weird was it listening to Yaddle talk normally as right. compared to Yoda, you know, who talks all misconstrued. So I don't know. I'm, I'm a fan. I'm a fan of him talking. So let's get it. Yeah. I mean, I don't really, to be honest with you, I don't really care if he does. For, for me, Grogu doesn't make the show. Like, yeah, he's cute. Okay, cool. But. You say that, but when that little shit uses the force, let's have a conversation. <laughs> yeah, well, but he's done that what like three times in the whole series, though. I mean, that, that's what it is. I guess he's he's saving it. If he uses it all the time, it's not as special, I suppose. Yeah, it's in the trailer, so let's see how but, special that's going to be. He takes that, you know, ape-looking uh, species down, whatever it was that saw him at the cave. Well, I am super I'm excited for it, man. Like, yeah. uh, it, it's, it's going to be a really, really good series. I mean, Mandalorian is yet to disappoint. Like, I mean, I've seen some episodes that were better than others, obviously, but it is all in all the entire series, especially with the way the last season ended. Um, just, it, it doesn't disappoint. So it looks like we're going to see a lot of lightsabers in this one. I'm wondering how much they're going to tie in last seasons with this. Cause we still have some dark saber questions, don't we? Yeah. Okay. Uh, questions. So kind Moff of... Gideon, did Moff Gideon die at the last? Mm -mm. No, I, just, I didn't think so. So we still have some. We st and we didn't see any of that in the trailer. So we know. No, we but know it looks. Problem. It looks like you have. I mean, there could be multiple subplots, but the main plot definitely looks like it's um, Dinjarin trying to unite the the tribes. And chances are, is that you know maybe he's finally going to see that the oh uh, Death Watch crew is not the way that you need to go. You know, he it seems that he is trying to piece together his people and now that you have people like Bo-Katan and everyone else showing up and he can kind of bring these people to a circle to have a conversation I would only assume that there's just going to be turmoil that comes out of that right so that's what it looks like I mean I'm all for it I mean live action Mandalorians bring them all day right. I like almost everything that Star Wars puts out you know the animation's a little lackluster you know you, could, you get filler episodes but I mean talk about like yeah, we're going to talk about filler episodes. Don't worry. Talk about Andor. <laughs> talk about, you know, we're going to get Ahsoka. You know, even Tells the Jedi was good for an animation. Um, 
you know, the season seven of Clone Wars was pretty good. Book of Boba Fett. If people complain they didn't have enough Boba Fett. I get it, but I mean, man, like they're they're bringing it for as quick as they pretty much botched the sequels. Yeah, <laughs> I think most people are pretty happy with the the television universe. I oh yeah, I agree. I would say honestly though, of the live action television universe we got so far, Boba Fett's probably my least favorite. Now, saying that doesn't mean that I think that it was bad. It's just that if I have to rank them. I'm probably putting Boba Fett down there. Um, what did you think about the scene with him pulling that Mandalorian mask out of the dirt, which was like something was buried or maybe hidden? Well, if it's Mandalore, then change. I was going to say, do you think that's Ash. a mask Mandalore? Well, yeah. I just think that if it's all, if they're actually on Mandalore, you know, it looks like the, the cool thing is, is that we got a whole bunch of, you know, uh, in one starfighter somehow traversing in hyperspace. Um, so that's new in itself, but then you turn around and you're actually going to get uh, all these places that he's going to go. You know, we see Coruscant. Um, he's, there's probably five planets just in the trailer alone. Okay. Just in the trailer. Yeah. So like, yeah. let's see where he actually goes to. You know, I'd, I love the old ship that he had. I would have liked to see more, but I mean, if we're still getting the space travel, then like I'm cool with that. Yeah. Well, I just wonder about the, the mask thing because it may mean nothing at all, but it could mean something. And I know that that like you know, there's a big deal with Nice Little Republic and in the Bane trilogy about you know the, that mask, <laughs> you know, being uncovered, and it and it does in those series. But who this is later? This is thousands of years later. So I don't know. I don't think that, that's. I don't know if that means anything. I don't know if they're going to use that to tie in some old school stuff. Is what I mean. Uh, I you think know? what it's going to be is uh, they could be having conversations around it, but it definitely seems like it's going to be more up the alley of seeing the um, aftermath years later of the Battle of Mandalore. So okay. that's that what could I'm be a flashback. You're right. Yeah, we're all we know. Yeah, I don't know, man. I'm excited for it. I know that Mandalorian once again hasn't disappointed. You're right. Star Wars television hasn't disappointed, not nearly as much as the movies have. I've enjoyed the, the television series of the last few years better than the last two movies, I could say. It's, than the last movie, especially, but last two movies, yeah, I could probably say. I'd, I'd rather I'd take the TV, the series over that, and the animation, to be honest with you, that I've, that I've taken in the last few years. So, yeah, I, this is what I wanted when Disney bought uh, Lucasfilm. I, I wanted to see so much more of the universe. Like mm -hmm. I don't just need Skywalker saga and living in it. I want to see star Wars, <laughs> you know, right. like give right. me, give me well, all of it. The problem is they went the wrong direction. Like they were like, okay, let's write something new. And in the future that hasn't been written yet, or it has, but it's not like, you know, as solid as the thousands and thousands of years of history we have in this universe. They should have gone back. That's all there was to it. They would have done so much better going back. Even if it was only like, 30 years <laughs> go back, you know, they could have gone back and, and done a lot better. And hopefully they're going to steer that ship in the right direction in the movie franchise in the future. But we will see what happens. They've been making some choices. We have, you know, uh, you know, you're a Norma Snyder fan. We get to see Zack Snyder's version of what a star Wars movie or idea that he had turned into with this new rebel moon movie. So, um, with that, that Netflix culmination of what's going to come in 2023. Uh, we got to see bits and pieces of that. And I thought that little bit was just interesting enough to, uh, I'm, I'm a fan for sci-fi. Like I, I love good sci-fi stories all the time. And I'm interested to see what Zack Snyder can do. And I'm even more interested that it's not immediately tied into the star Wars universe, because as much as I love the star Wars lore, I also want to see new things come off of it. And this is something I can't say that it will be the first thing that's getting made that was supposed to be made under like the star Wars Lucasfilm title, mm -hmm. but I'm interested to see how well it does because it seems to be one of the bigger ones. Okay. Look, this is going to sound weird for me. Cause you know me, I love Zack Snyder. I have the, I love the yeah, shirt. And like, I like, I love his movies. I love his his tone, his, his storytelling, everything. 
Zack Snyder's not a guy I'd pick for Star Wars. Because Star Wars is so different from Zack Snyder's tone. And I don't want to change the tone of Star Wars. You know, like, like I'm not saying he couldn't tell a good Star Wars story. And I'm not saying that Rebel Moon won't be good. But me, that would have been the guy I picked. And that's funny coming from me because you know he's probably my favorite director. Like, I love Zack Snyder. It's just... Everybody does their certain things well. And Zack Snyder is not not a Star Wars guy. Now, he could make something that blows me away. And I could be totally wrong. I, I just, right off the top of my head, wouldn't think Zack Snyder for a Star Wars flick. No, I think you're describing why there are certain like MCU things that you're not a fan of because of the fact that they go, they, they run the gamut of their directors and their, their writers and everything else. So they, they bring in such a diverse group to tell. It's supposed to be a unified story, but I mean like loosely unified, they mm -hmm. tell it in so many different ways. And I, I think that a lot of people have expectations that star Wars won't do that. But I think that those expectations aren't going to last because at some point you have to, at some point you yeah. have to, to really reach out and you know, you look at, yeah. Uh, what's his name? It helped on rogue one, two, and then made Andor and it's going to make season two of Andor. But really, I mean, it's, it's about the same thing. It was just a different take. So, uh, Gilroy. And so when you're going to take someone like that and just, they gave him the keys to the kingdom, but without. I don't think he was already coming in with something crazy. Right. And I think you're going to get crazy at some point. Mm -hmm. I think we're going to work our way there. But mm -hmm. just like with any other um, IP, you know, it's going to take its time to actually get there. Right. You, you, same thing we talk about with comic books when they make something one off in a comic book that doesn't feel like it fits. You know, that's just. What it is, right? Times are changing. That is true. Yeah, and you know, honestly, that that I didn't even think about it before. That maybe what's setting wrong with me there is I don't see Zack Snyder with Disney. Disney's uh, not very sleepy, and I don't see Zack Snyder yeah. as bending to the will of sacrificing his content for the sake of anything else. That Disney sure. might want him to do, you know. So. But there are a lot of people that want to be a part of these, you know, enormous blockbuster IPs, and like that's yeah, the the line you have to toe sometimes. Right. And, you know, that's right. really about what you want. Right. Um, which one you want to jump into next? Uh, I guess let's do the Ant Man trailer because uh, I've so, seen that one. So let's do the two I've seen, and then I'll pull up the uh, the teaser for Invincible. So I got the Ant Man trailer here. Let me Quantum Mania. Quantum Mania. Quantumania. Bro, this is going to be a pretty awesome movie. I'm excited to go see it. So let me remove this. Stop screen. I don't want to invite somebody. See, this is what happens when you get old people doing stuff. Or at least me. There we go. Let's share that one. All right, here we go. So we're we'll going to turn the Ant Man trailer on. I'll make it full screen here. So we are going to see this in what? Uh, let's see, it's the day after my daughter's birthday. It's the 17th, 4 p.m. Is, is this the final trailer? This is the final. Oh, I don't know. I pulled up Ant-Man 3 final trailers and came up a few days ago. Okay. So, uh, that's, that's it then. Okay. So we're There's going not to a whole this. lot of content. <clears throat> okay. Um, I'm excited, man. Did you? Are we going 3D? Yeah. Okay. So we're doing this 3D. Which is a good choice, I believe. I but. told you just the... I, I was sold on the trailer uh, attached to the front of Avatar. So I want to see what they're going to do with it in 3D. I think that if you're going to see something in 3D, this looks like it's going to be fantastic. Certain movies are made for it. You know, so like there, there's definitely movies that are better to see in 3D. Like I remember I went and saw... Um, what was the second Avengers movie? Civil War? In 3D? <laughs> Age yeah, Ultron. just just because, and I was like, uh, this is not really a movie I want to see in 3D. But then I went and saw Doctor Strange, the first one, in 3D, and I was like, oh, this is definitely a movie you want to see in 3D. So there's a difference. It all depends on where you sit, the type of movie, but this but looking one right this, here. All yeah. of this stuff that you're, you're, you're describing it as it's actually happening, and I'm like, the, the fact that they 
they do everything that they're doing with mm-hmm. um, Paul Rudd's character. When you, these scenes, like just everything moving around, all of the motion in this, all the depth that they have. I mean, I know that it's all CG and fake, <laughs> but mm-hmm. like, that's what makes it easy for them to manipulate. Well, I don't know, man. It looks like some of those, they just paid for some of those web telescope pictures, you know, <laughs> and put them in the background. Cause that's exactly what it looks like. Some of those web telescope pictures, which just, that's, that's, that's how they get their it's funding. Right there. Yeah. Um, man, I don't know where this is going in the future with this. Like, I don't know. I, I feel like this movie right here is the jumping off point for the next phase in the MCU. At least for me, it is. It feels actually, that way. um, the, there hasn't been a whole lot of news, but we've been talking about it since the trailers have been coming out and you have, you know, Feige talking about why quantum mania is going to be the, the jump off point. And, mm-hmm. you know, mainly because this is going to begin telling the story. And I think that you have to find a way to like, they didn't really bring Thanos in in like a, a very good way. I mm-hmm. take that back. It's not the right wording. I'm trying to say they didn't bring Thanos in in a way that uh, showed you all of his background. They didn't show you who right. he was beforehand. And so I think this drip method of bringing Kang into the universe or, you know, uh, what was he called in he who shall remain or he who he reigns or whatever he's called in Loki. Um, the other version of him. Yeah. When you have that, like this character that has, that knows so much and has basically traversed all of the, multiverses or been a part of it and like, you know, fought his own war against himself. You know, you want to talk about a civil war. I, I don't even know what you would call that when you fight a war against yourself. Right. I mean, it's more like, I don't know, like self flatulation. I don't know what you want to call it, right. um, but it's fun. I think that the method that they're actually going to use to bring King in through the quantum verse, quantum universe, whatever you want to call it, the, I think that's what Feige was trying to basically describe is at some point we have to start small with the idea of King. And then in this iteration, literally they were starting small with him, but uh, you know, they're going to blow him out of the water coming into this whole entire thing. So, well, I, I do want to say like, I feel like Marvel's going had been through a down phase. And I feel like this is their this is their next step into moving into the next phase. And the problem with it is is they they went so big, and I want to say so quick, but it was like ten years, twenty three yeah. years. So it wasn't it wasn't quick. Um, yeah, like you would expect it to end there, uh, but but how do you top that? It, is it's the question? Like how do you top the Infinity Gauntlet? Like and I know in comics you do the same thing. Like how do you top it once you've got to that point? But in movies, how do you top that? Especially with characters that can't be renewed. Now I did see today that there was. And I don't know, I'm looking it up right now, a confirmation that uh, we will see Robert Downey Jr.'s Iron Man at the end of this movie. I, I did, mean, did there have definitely like been that? rumors. And I, that saw has come from, I saw something that said confirmed today, but let me check it right now. Okay, so. I haven't, uh, I don't, I take it easy on, uh, on uh, clickbait, so. Oh, I agree. I agree. Like I said, it was a flash thing I saw, and, and I, I'm not sure how true it was, but... Uh, I can't tell you how many times I saw that Tom Cruise was confirmed to be in you know, the multiverse of madness. So. Right, yeah. We'll see what happens, but <clears throat> what do you think they're doing if they do that? Like, they're not bring, It's It's got to be a flashback or some kind of moment in time they're going into. There's no way they're bringing him back in and the fold as Iron Man, right? Well, there's been a whole lot of hints that... Uh, uh, Secret War is going to be, or even Secret Invasion, but Secret War is, they're just going to be bringing so much back to it. And yeah, if they do it in, look, if someone could pull off, you know, living consciousness, it would probably be Tony Stark. But at the same time, why? I don't, I don't find that really necessary. All right. I would love to see that because I, do, I mean, I, I do love, but I, I do love um, Robert Downey's Tony Stark. I love the Iron Man. I love his, his, the look, everything about it. He's a perfect casting for that. I just don't know how you write it back in, and I don't want to sacrifice a bad story for being able to see a character that I like again, especially when you still have so many characters, you can tell. I know yeah. there's stuff there talks about <clears throat> Sentry, 
being a guy coming in, which is great. I want to see that's awesome. It's Marvel Superman, except he's evil. Let's see what happens. Uh, and we still have Fantastic Four and the X Men. So we have yep. so much stuff in the future, and I want to see what they're going to do with that. That's what I'm really looking forward to with Marvel. That's how they're going to blow me away. And right now, Ant Man, one of my favorite characters from the previous, you know, phases, moving forward, jumping this off. I want to see what happens. It's, it's going to be really, really fun. And <clears throat> I'm more interested to see where this movie ends. Like, I, I want to see what happens. I, I'm excited for the story, but I'm more excited for at the end of this movie, where are we at in the Marvel universe? How is it affected? What's going on going forward? You know? Yeah. And, and patience I think we're going to be in for a big surprise. The patience for most people is kind of shot because they want to know like the continuation of the story immediately. Now and we know that, they have a plan, right? Yeah. Oh, know it. And, know it. you know, the first six movies were, you know, the slow unfolding of trying to figure out how they were going to make all this stuff come to screen realistically. And then they did it. And I mean, like now it's... <sighs> Now, now, what can't they do? And I mean, a lot of people haven't been too crazy about the last phase. Don't get me wrong. Like, I understand it's not everyone's jam. But the next one looks absolutely crazy. And like you said, we still have things on the horizon that, I mean, are just people's favorites, you know? Right. So right. is it going to get me tied in? Is it going to start off something, something fresh? You know, like, what sucks is that we have seen things, great things, and we're not going to see those great things again. Mm hmm but I look forward to all the stuff that they keep telling because I'm all about the new story. Right. However, they're going to keep it going. I want to point out Valerian's chats here, which by the way, it's an awesome name. Love, love the name there. Um, he says, Marvel's done for me. There's too much stories to make more money. I can't stand it anymore. I get that. As everybody knows, he's listening to the show. I'm not a huge fan of the last phase, the movies or the television shows. There were some good shows. I really did like some of the stuff, but it didn't, didn't really blow me away. Maybe it's Marvel fatigue. I'm not sure. However, they're moving forward. They're going into a new phase. This movie looks awesome, and I'm always, always, always willing to give somebody a chance for redemption with a movie series. Okay, I'm not beholden to love one, and once I hate this, I hate it forever. They could come out with a great movie in the future and I love it, or I could love part of what they have and not all of it and still be okay with that because there's so much to, 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 to eat up. However, I'm going to wait to see what happens because it's Marvel, and even though I didn't like the last phase, they still have a pretty damn good track record. One phase, based on everything they've given me, is not enough to make me say, this shit sucks. You know, I can say that about the last phase, some things, but you know what? I never have to go back and watch that again. Like, never, ever, ever do I have to go back and watch those shows again, those movies again, nothing. And they won't affect my life, my story, my timeline with these movies, anything. Like, I can do that. And guess what? I still have Fantastic Four and X-Men to look forward to. So even though I may not agree with everything Marvel's done in the past, um, they have a bright future with all the content they can still put out. I don't know how well they're going to do it. I'm not going to go ahead and pat them on the back yet. But I know with their track record, it's looked pretty good so far. And this movie looks great. I can't wait to see it. So that's what I have to say to that. Like I, 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 I get what he's saying. I totally get that because that's that Marvel fatigue. And I know a bunch of people who are saying the same exact thing. All I'm saying is don't shut Marvel out because you might miss out on some really good stuff. Like if you don't like it, you watch something one time you didn't like, you never have to watch yep. it again. And, and that's that. That's it. And then you can, you can hate watch it after that if you want to, or during that, if you want to do it. It's no big deal to me. And the exact opposite is true. You know, like there's a, there's a lot of people that I didn't know that were going to be into certain shows or movies that were hardcore into them. Right. Um, and I find that fascinating because, you know, I always find different people's takes on stuff like that very interesting. But you're right. They're going to keep moving forward. We're going to get different stories. We're going to get much of the same story. Because let's face it, uh, there's pretty much like an endless supply of comic book characters. So right. they can just keep right. going exactly. for as much as they want to. Um, a little time to go out, and they're always creating new ones. Look, I mean, it's yeah. like I said, I didn't like the last phase, but you know, I liked Loki. I liked, uh, I liked uh, Miss Marvel. Um, Moon Knight was okay. You know, there was some stuff that came out that I that I did enjoy. The Spider Man movie was good. I wasn't as big of a fan of the Doctor Strange movie, and it wasn't that it was a bad movie. It was just that I was expecting more. I think based on what the first one, how great the first one was, it was kind of a Wonder Woman thing. The first yeah. one was too good. 
like there was no way to top it. So after that, it's like, well, it's kind of like Dumb and Dumber. Like, there's no way to make another Dumb and Dumber. It's just you can't do it. You know, I, I mean, I disagree. I think that they could have definitely have topped Doctor Strange. I only think that the problem was is that they they had a self contained story that they were going a certain direction with, and uh, I, I, I worry because you know, just like that at the very ending, like. I need to know what they were planning on doing. And they just dropped what's her name in there. And I'm like, uh, that, I don't need that many more questions. I need like answers. Like, and that's what I talk about with the patience thing. Like when it comes to Ant-Man, uh, people are going to want like immediate answers. Like what happens next? And like, well, you're right. going to have to wait. There's going to be four other things that you're probably not going to enjoy Marvel wise before you actually get to the next thing that you want to know this answer to. So. Yeah. And waiting sucks. I'm not going to lie. Like, look, you know, me and Ashley, we're behind on a lot of shows. We just watched, you know, Breaking Bad, Walking Dead, uh, Witcher, uh, uh, Game of Thrones. We've caught up on all this and we didn't have to wait. Now we're watching Last of Us. And I just told Ashley we finished it last night. And I was like, we have to wait till Sunday to watch the next episode. Then after that, we have to wait a whole another week to watch the next episode. Then when they finish, we're probably have to wait a year to watch the next next season. I was like, so let's get used to being like everybody else. Or we could wait five years. (laughs) <laughs> just watch it all at once. She was like, no, we're not yeah. So, hey, yeah, it just depends. Hey, I just want to say real quick, uh, Valerian, cheers from Portugal, guys. Cool. We're international. That's what's up. Cheers, man. So, we're at in Portugal. I've been all over Portugal. Go. I like that place. Oh, nice. There you go. I'd love to go sometime. But yeah, Ross is the uh, traveling man. He's been all over the world. So, uh, but it's good to see you, man. I appreciate it. Awesome name once again. And then the uh, the thing he says here is uh, tryout uh, from on MGM. Trust me, it was the best show of last year because it wasn't made a mainstream platform. People don't talk about it much, but check the trailer out at least. I will definitely do it. Uh, uh, Valerian, where can you if it's from MGM? Where can you stream that at? If you're if you're still in the chat room, where can you stream that at? Because I like to. I think I'm always down to check that out. Own platform. Do they? I think they, they do. Ha- if MGM has their own platform. I don't pay for it. <laughs> for almost everything. So. Hey, d- just so you know, we're talking about uh, everything, everywhere, all the time here in a little while. We're gonna all at just, once. Just, just, yeah, all at once. <coughs> just down the road. Great movie. If you haven't had a chance to watch it, or if you have, uh, or yeah, if you haven't had a chance to watch it yet, it's on Showtime, which is tough. If you have Paramount Plus, and Paramount Plus may get mad at me for saying this, but I'm sure they probably won't because they allow it. Uh, oh, everyone the, allows it. The add-on. Yeah, yeah. Add the Showtime add-on, watch the movie, and then take the Showtime add-on one off. It's four dollars, just like renting a movie. Like watch the, Yellow Jackets because, uh, like I said, that's something I need to get on too. I've been told countless times check it out, and season two apparently is about to drop, so yeah. I gotta try that out. Adam Sanders says Spider Man was overhyped. Uh, I thought Spider Man was pretty good. I mean, I'm a huge Spider Man fan, so like it's hard to have bad Spider Man for me. Um, it had to be super hyped though because it was the last movie of the of the third phase where you know, of the infinity saga. Like that was, that was it. That was wrapping up Tony Stark's story. Like it had to be pretty hyped. I thought they did a pretty good job with it. Um, of course it wasn't perfect, but I mean, I thought they did a pretty good job with it. Got them banned in China. <laughs> yeah. True. Three years, man. And yeah. I think, it, I, I think that's more like, Hey, like the pandemic's happening. We don't want people to go to movies. We're just going to ban everything that Marvel makes and then like call it a day. It seemed like what they were doing. But then it was definitely ironic that they came back and said that uh, they were going to unban it for, um, or the ban was up and they were going to start showing Black Panther. And I'm like, but the, the nation under the red flag is pretty, pretty racist. (laughs) So (laughs) (laughs) it's funny that it's funny that they came back for Black Panther. So yeah. Uh, Valerian says, I watched it first on FX, but the next season is going to be aired on MGM. But hey, there's always the pirate alternative. And uh, yeah, while I can't condone that, I hear you. <laughs> so, well, things I you exist. I hear you. I, exactly. Th- things I recognize things that exist. Right. Yes. Right. So, uh, dude, where are we at? We're talking about the Ant Man trailer. Is there anything else you got to say about it? Like, nope. Do we know Ready anything movie, going forward in this uh, phase as far as like, uh, Fantastic Four or X Men? Like, I would assume that they're probably going to do possible um, multiverse of madness style things. Come out with Secret Wars and stuff like that. But I'm not positive because once again, 
that could be tons of like clickbait stuff that we see in the future and it never comes to fruition. I only assume that this gives them a chance to do so if they want to. That could be a totally different phase for all we know. So, all right, well, let's, uh, let's move on. Actually, you know what? I wasn't good. I didn't pull up the invincible teaser. Well, I'll talk about it real fast. They talked about invincible a couple years ago when it came out and they're like, so good. We're just going to go ahead and give you not only one more season, but two. Uh, so season two was confirmed and then season three was confirmed like shortly after that. Um, I, th- I actually think that they had all three of those planned out beforehand, right? Like that was the whole, there was a plan, theory. Okay, but they didn't get picked up until the, you know, the numbers came in for season one, which dude, season one, like with Omni man. And I, I mean, you, you look at little Mark as the sun trying to come out and be uh, it's, I don't want to mention it because it's also on Amazon, but it's very boys esque with like Homelander and how Omni Man is trying to like hide under his title and uh, his superhero ness, but then turn around and actually be a bad guy. So, all right. Well, this is a series that I I knew absolutely nothing about until they came out with the animated series. However, it's Robert Kirkman. And I love his writing. Uh, I love Oblivion Song, Walking Dead. Like, it's all good stuff. So I was like, let's give it a chance. And it turned out to be phenomenal. I've turned so many people onto animation just because of this show right here. Uh, I've wanted to buy the Omnibus because I think that from people that I know that are bigger comic book fans than I am, the first season is only like 20 episodes into the, or 20 books into the Omnibus. Like, it's, it's not, it's not like, it's it's only I, I think it's like a, qu- a quarter of the way through the omnibus, like the whole story. So there's a lot of story to tell. But yeah, I'm I'm insanely excited. So it, it kind of sucks that I'm watching this for the first time, and it seems like this teaser is just them sitting in a in a diner and talking. <laughs> Watch so this that- part. I'll describe it real fast. And so what he's talking about is why it took him so long to actually like where's he been and what's he been up to. Okay. And it's a real short like uh, anime compilation of how they actually had to like animate the show and like why it takes so long to actually make a season to come out with it, even though it's animated, you don't have, you know, actors and contracts and blah, blah, blah. You do have contracts, but, and so it's a real quick teaser and it's like, what's taking so long? Like, why aren't you out here doing something? And he's like, I've been busy. And then it goes on to, to basically tell you that the show is going to come out in, uh, what did it say? Fall late. I think it said late 2023. And so, actually, Seth we'll Rogen, right? right? That was Seth Rogen's voice. The other guy. Yeah. yeah, I'm excited, man. I love this show. Like I said, I know a lot of people that don't like animation, and I've told them just like give the show a chance because I think is it the first episode of the first season where you get the the big turn where uh, Omni Man kills everybody, or is that like two or three episodes in? I can't remember. I think I think that's it. I don't think that. I, ooh, I, I, think I don't think you know think it's him. What you're right, you don't think, but somebody mm. people get killed. I think it's the end of the yeah. first episode, and like, so I told people, like, watch the first episode, get through that. Mm. When you get at the end, if you don't like it, okay, I understand, but it you see the different tone after the first episode. And my wife's the same way, man, she doesn't like animation, but I don't know, dude. I think that whenever I read audiobooks, read audiobooks, listen to audiobooks, <laughs> I uh, I see them animated in my head. So animation has become more natural to me lately. I'm not sure why, but this this series is awesome. I can't wait to see season two. Um, you may want to find a couch and uh, someone with a notepad to talk to about that. About what? Watch <laughs> dream, dream <laughs> Why do cartoons? Why do I read with my ears? And not only when I read with my ears, I <laughs> right. picture things, cartoons. Like yeah. <laughs> that could be something. You're right. That could be something. To talk to somebody about it. sure. Uh, so I'm definitely going to go back, go back and watch this entire um, <clears throat> teaser uh, where I can actually hear it because I feel like it's something you actually have to hear to really get. Yeah, it's a it's a real. Uh, like, it's not like clips from the series or clips from the no, second season no, no, that you no. see in this and that. It, it's it's like a conversation. It's a date announcement is what it is. It's all that it is. Yeah, and it's it's a loose date announcement. You know, like we got a loose date announcement today from Invincible. Uh, earlier in the week, we got one from uh, uh, Ted Lasso. Love it. You know, like the season three, the final season. 
is coming out and they're like it's gonna come out in spring like cool <laughs> can you tell us a little bit more please <laughs> Hey, Valerian says, what are your thoughts on the first episode of Last of Us? I thought it was great adaptation, 10 for 10 for me. Obviously, Ellie is hard to get because of the actress, but it's well done. Valerian, we are going to talk about that, but we have a few shows beforehand. That is the main event tonight, so I hope you stick around because you're definitely talking about Last of Us. That is something we're going to cover throughout the entirety of the series uh, starting tonight, but that is going to be the final topic for tonight at Last of Us. So stick around. we got a good, a lot of good things to talk about between now and then. As a matter of fact, Ross, do you want to go ahead and start getting us some shows? Yeah, I think uh, an old show, we don't even have to watch anything about it, but we'll just mention it real fast before we jump into an A show. Uh, the Power Rangers thing is coming back around April 19th. Mm -hmm. That looks interesting, if you were ever a Power Rangers fan. But the no, the shows that are actually airing right now, oh yeah, I forgot about that. you just finished up Jack Ryan. Ooh, yes, I did. Um, actually, not too long ago, uh, I watched two episodes Okay, so I watched an episode at lunch today at work. Then I listened to an episode, so I didn't really watch the seventh episode because I listen to a lot of audiobooks. So I feel like in my mind, I can hear characters that I know and stories and picture things in my head and get that. The only time you really have to watch the show is when there's like dead silence and nobody talking. Then I have to stop and stop the truck pull up the phone, look at what's going on with dead silence and nobody talking. Then when people start talking again, put it down do you know and just listen so <clears throat> most of the seventh episode i didn't watch i listened to but everything else i listened or i watched um look man i oh, love this series i think we Jack got Ryan. taken down <laughs> <laughs> what happened <laughs> so they were talking in the chat apparently we got taken down for a violation oh no we're oh, back I up play, i didn't play any sound oh well anyway um Screw them if they can't take a joke. Yeah, oh well, I don't care. I don't make any money off this. Whatever so make, take, 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 sue me. <laughs> the joke's on yeah. you. Go ahead and sue me. The joke's on you. Um, <clears throat> okay, so with Jack Ryan, like, I really like this series. Um, I really like this this season, but they committed the ultimate sin and good storytelling for me at the end of the season, and that's they solved the problem by talking the bad guy off the ledge. You know, and it's like I get it sometimes maybe when you back yourself into a corner, that's the only thing you do, but it's like, there was such good writing in this whole series, this whole season. And then like at the end, I was like, did they really just talk that guy down and then like convince him to do this? And then like, nobody resisted, like everybody in the ship is it here. And then nobody resisted. Like, really? It's like, Oh, I don't like that. Doesn't turn me off. Still an awesome series. I think Krasinski does a phenomenal job as Jack Ryan. I was actually talking to a friend about it today because he sent me a gif with uh, Jim Halpert on something I said to him. And I was like, you know, it's funny. I don't see him as Jim Halpert anymore. And I love The Office. It's probably my second favorite sitcom of all time. And it's not even a sitcom. It's a, it's a what's the word for it? Uh, um, mockumentary is what it is. It's not even really a sitcom. Uh, but it's probably one of my second favorite like short shows comedy shows of all time but uh i don't see him as jim halpert anymore when i look at him the first season season and a half i did now he's jack ryan like this guy graduated man. Acting chops, man he did he graduated yep. he grew up for sure uh, i'm loving it though uh so we talked about the first half last week and i know you watched the whole thing when it came out i just watched the last four episodes but before i let me post some thoughts here and then you go into it and tell me what you thought about the finale of this because you know i thought Kind of a lackluster finale. Still like the show, still like the season, but kind of a lackluster finale. What do you think? That's why they dropped the whole thing. I think that that's one of the, uh, you know, you can only shoot the bad guy so many times. And like you said, you're, you're one of your biggest problems is that they they talk the bad guy down. That's always been a problem that you've brought up, and I, I, I can appreciate that. I think mm -hmm. that sometimes you want to try to be able to go that route. Um, but also the show has always been a, a drop at one time show. You get all episodes at one time and every single time it's come out, like I've watched just about all of it almost in one sitting. I've known so many people to watch a show in one sitting. Like they spend like the yeah. days before or after Christmas, whenever they have downtime just to sit and run through the whole thing. Yeah. Honestly, um, like, 
I'm a fan of it. I love the, the the complete storytelling. There's not a whole lot of things on Amazon Prime. I, I'm going to be dead honest with you. If it wasn't for The Expanse getting picked up on Amazon Prime, I probably would not have given it as much of a like permanent tab on my browser to, to keep checking to see what's out. Uh, even with all the hype that they did with the uh, Lord of the Rings show, Rings of Power, it didn't produce for me. Um, I like Jack Ryan, you know, uh, you and I have been talking and like per Tony talking about, uh, hunters, like we're going to start, start that and try to see how far we can get with that. Um, but you know, you know, the other one that we watched that was all over the place, um, what was it called? Show? The, the one with the girl, uh, time jumping or not time jumping, but sending her the peripheral. There you go. Oh, yes. <laughs> and so, like, there's a lot of things on there that are very confusing. And, like, I watch some funny things, but I honestly give up more on Amazon shows than I, than I do other networks, I guess, or, you know, uh, streaming platforms. Truth be told, though, Jack Ryan is just a solid show. Yeah. And it doesn't matter about... I don't want to say it doesn't matter where like they drop the ball because they don't really drop the ball. Like to me, that wasn't like a massive thing at the end with them talking the the bad person down because there were so many steps to like the bad people that you know he keeps it's it's Carmen San Diego, you know, what I man. It's just going around like finding all the clues, and then you know when he gets to the end, like if talking to him off the ledge is the problem, then I get it. But the show was really really good, and yeah. you can't argue with the the acting's on point for everybody. Uh, the plot line for the entire show is always really good. Mm-hmm. And so all around, I just really enjoy it. Yeah. Oh, the acting is on point. And, and, you know, Ross, me and you are military guys. So it's cool to see things done. I don't know. I'm not going to say a hundred percent because I was never like special forces or anything like that, but like, it's cool to see things that I can recognize things, but like, okay. Yeah. That's the way to be done. Mm-hmm. Like, I get that. Uh, just just movements and, and tactical things. It's like, okay, I can see that. Um, real quick in the chat, uh, Adam says they did a good job selling the Russian ship could attack, uh, although I think they could, uh, or uh, I thought anything could happen there at the in the end there. True. Up to that point, you're right. Like, they shot that missile. You know, they, they stopped the missile. I was like, okay, where is this going? And then I was like, oh, no. Oh, no. They're going to talk him down. Like it, it was the tension point, was real and palpable. I mean, that's that, that's that the, was thing, the right? highest point of tension. Exactly. The <laughs> highest point of tension. They broke that and then they just kind of fizzled away after that. And it's cool. Like I said, there was a good enough series that I'm not pissed off about that. And OK, sometimes maybe that is a necessity, but I just wish they would have done a better job with the finale of that show. As far as I don't like villains being talked down. I don't I, I just don't think that a real villain, a real big bad that's big enough to be for the whole whole season of a show or a movie can be like told set, like heard words at the end that he's probably heard 10,000 times and be like, you know what? You're right. Let's not do it. Let's not do this anymore. You're right. You're how old now? And (laughs) would you go back and tell your, your teenage, your 20 something year old, like, would you like, there's a lot of things now in your life that you would think of differently. And so as I do get your point and I am always in the firm belief that like bad characters can be 50, 50, they can be, uh, you know, through and through bad, nothing will convince them to change their, their point of view. And I get that, you know, martyr for the cause or whatever the reason is, but there is also the other side of the, of the, of the coin there. And that is at some point you have to be affected by other things, right? You're not learning and growing, right? If you are continuing to be the, hardcore like i'm only out for revenge person then like you've you've stopped your growing like you've stopped everything you only live for one purpose mm-hmm. so i get where you're going with it but i think that there are definitely there's multiple sides but those are the two that are probably the biggest to actually pay attention to right All right uh, a few more things from the chat right here. Uh, you know what, Valerian? I'm going to ask this top three. Uh, uh, real quick, he asked, what are your top three favorite TV shows of all time? He says, Breaking Bad, Game of Thrones, and Raised by Wolves. I'm going to star that. We'll come back to it. Give you a second to think about it. We'll go through some more. Yeah. He also asked if we checked out Willow. Uh, yes, we checked out Willow. And I said this in the chat. We have covered it for the last few weeks. Ross and I are big fans of Willow from when we were younger, the movie, the original movie. We're not as big of fans of 
the TV series that's come out after that. Um, yep. If you go through the, the, the what we covered on it, we'll explain why. It's just too big of a world with too big of a gap. And Disney. It's too small of a story that they <laughs> yeah. told in a series. Disney. <laughs> that's, that's a, the, the three problems. Yeah, Disney. So he also says he hated the finale of uh, Peripheral. Um, I did not enjoy the finale of Peripheral, but I will say that this is a movie that me and Ross both agreed. We need to go back and watch all together one time. It's too oh, confu- yeah, yeah. it's too confusing to watch it week to week. Like it, there, it's a good show, but there's way too much to take in. And if you go back and watch it all in one setting, things may change. I haven't yet, so I can't say that things will. But I feel like that's a better show if you if if you go back and watch the whole thing. And I'm gonna watch season two because it was good enough for me to watch what's coming next if there is anything. Um, Let's see. I, I I lost peripheral in the fourth episode. Adam Sanders says, "Yeah, I, like I said, this come all comes down to there was so much to take in. You really need to watch this one really long movie." Um, Valeria and I loved Willow. It made me go watch the movie. I'm glad you watched the movie. Um, just remember, the movie was made at a different time, without plans of something in the future being made from it. And this is almost a forced give me money project with Willow. After that, is how I feel at least. Uh, the best show of time travel for me was dark on Netflix, but it's kind of confusing. I haven't watched that yet, but I'll go check it out. I'm not a big time travel guy. It confuses me. I don't understand (laughs) it. And the problem is if there was one set of rules for time travel, like seriously, like if we knew how to do it and there was one set of rules that everybody went by, I'd be like, okay, cool. But there's not like literally anybody can make up anything they want to about time travel. And you can't say, well, no, that doesn't make sense. Well, why doesn't it? Because it's not real. Why doesn't it make sense? So I, I have an issue with time travel. Not not saying that all time travel movies are bad because I love Back to the Future. I love the Infinity Saga. Like there are certain ones who do a good job with it. Um, but it's just weird trying to learn the new rules from time travel. Or if you're gonna have different rules, there should be like a disclaimer at the beginning that states them, you know, like so so you know exactly where you're at going into time travel. And then last thing he says here is uh, Netflix trash or, or crash after canceling 1880, 1899 producers of the show uh, made one of the best TV shows on Netflix deserved a second season. Explain the plot of the sim. Uh, Netflix does this though. Like that's, that's what Netflix is known for. Like I, what was the show that we really, really liked? Um, uh, a superhero a, show, no, really. Jupiter, like, it was good, it was good <laughs> the one we can never Jupiter, remember the name of. Jupiter Ascending, yeah. It was a Jupiter Ascending. Jupiter or Rising. Movie. Jupiter one of the Rising. Two, movie. Jupiter know. Ascending was the movie. Jupiter Rising was the TV show. <laughs> Look, it wasn't phenomenal, but it was a good show. It was better than a lot of things I see on Netflix that go on longer. And for some reason, they canceled it. Netflix just does that. They have so much money, they can throw things at the wall, see what sticks, and if it sticks not long enough for them, they'll just toss it away. And it kind of sucks. 1899 was in my list. I am not going to lie, though. I thought that it was a movie. Um, oh, okay. I definitely watched the trailer for it and enough for me to, you know, click the, the icon and put it in my list. Um, I did hear it was a little bit of like Westworldian as far as, I guess, what the, the uh, overarching plot was truly supposed to be. Um, but I have not heard a whole lot about anything with that afterwards. So okay. it is somewhere deep in uh, my file on here to go back and watch. Well, let's wrap it back around to Jack Ryan real quick. Um, Cause like I said, lackluster kind of ending for me, or at least it, g- it gave me the one thing I really don't like, but still a good movie. Um, I love the characters though, man. Um, who is, <sighs> I think the thing that the, the coolest was the thing about the show was like I was saying before, it's relative to the time. Mm-hmm. Like they start to incorporate things that we're dealing with in real life right now. I can almost look at Jack Ryan as like the future James Bond, to be truly honest with you. I don't see why you couldn't do Jack Ryan as a James Bond, do multiple stories of him doing multiple things. And when John Krasinski gets, gets older, keep going with another actor. You know? Yeah. I didn't like the movie. Like me and Ashley watched the first season and she was like, there's a movie. And I said, yeah, but it's got Tom Cruise in it. And she had, she's like, I got to see it. Cause she loves Tom Cruise. She loved it. Eh, it was hold okay. On, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Yeah. Jack Ryan was in Tom Cruise. Tom Cruise, Jack Ryan. I thought movie. he was Reacher. 
Oh, you know what? That's Chris what Pine. That's Chris Pine was. played Jack Reacher or played Jack Ryan, didn't he? I think it was Chris Pine that was in. I'm thinking about Jack Reacher. Then. You're absolutely okay. right. Yeah, you're absolutely right. So I always confuse those two because they come out around the same time. Kind of the same story, but yeah. You don't um, know Jack. Yeah. But I don't know, man. I think that uh, I think you could move forward with this uh, series in the future. No problem. You know, I think that the actors yeah. are spot on. The stories are good. I'm not expecting every single episode to be to blow me away. Uh, no show does that, and I get that. There's got to be some kind of episodes that are like, ah, what a cut it goes the other. I just hate when it's the finale. But so many, yeah, okay, well, you yeah, know, that's where you want to go. Like honestly, every every episode of this this show up until that point was like, oh man, and honestly, it was up until that point of the folding. Like I, I was like, wow, this is really good. I, it, it's probably a personal thing for me. To be honest with you, it's not it's not something they had to change. It's probably really good story writing, but I just that didn't sit well with me. I don't like villains being talked down. So uh, let's see. Valerian says one more thing. He said, uh, Mindhunter is great uh, and Netflix canceled it, too. I can't understand Netflix choices anymore. That's why HBO Max is getting better at this point. Uh, Well, you know, I'm not going to lie. Unless there's something specific I have to go watch for Netflix, I never turn it on. I have it yeah, because it's Netflix. I'm gonna I'm gonna keep it, but yeah. I never go to them for something just to watch, unless somebody tells me go watch the Netflix. I'm not I'm not watching it. HBO yeah. Max is my go to. I like Paramount Plus is really good. Like Paramount Plus has a lot of really good stuff. Uh, Prime has a lot of really good stuff. So there are other uh, streaming services out there right now that are having some really good things coming on. That Netflix has got some competition right now, and they may be getting to a point pretty soon where they can't just start throwing shows away like they are. Um, now, I think they they kind of realize that. I, th yeah. I mean, to a certain extent, the problem well, is I'll, like they 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 have their own algorithm when it comes to what they keep and what they don't keep, right. and that turns into an issue. Um, but you know, you get a lot of other people that are are, are all into you know putting shows out there that are not great, so. Right. The decision making can go back and forth. You can make a case for either side. Um, mm. They all have a few. The problem is that none of them are excellent. I've always said that, like, Dollars of Donuts, like, Apple has some of the best TV shows. I was going to say, I think Apple TV might be the best, and I haven't even seen anything on Apple TV yet. But just based on what everybody says, I've never heard anybody say one bad thing about an Apple TV yeah. show. The shows that are on there are never, so good. Ever. Yeah, and as soon as I get a new TV, damn it. I will have Apple TV. My TV is so old that it won't get Apple TV. It won't download Apple TV on it. So, um, damn it. I had a point right before that that I wanted to make, but I can't remember what it was. Was it about Jack oh, Ryan? Here it is. No, it's not about Jack. Well, kind of. Um, it's about right here. The, the, the talking about HBO, uh, Netflix being so bad and HBO being, uh, Max being so great. Yes and no. Like, while we talk trash about Netflix and how they are canceling shows and how I'd rather watch some of the stuff on HBO Max, HBO Max is hurting, man. They're selling properties left and right. They're, they're talking well, about shutting down. Well, there's a reason behind that. There is, but there, if it, whether there's a reason yeah. or not, they are. And yeah. they have shows coming out with The Last of Us and everything else that may help them out. But as far as a business model goes, Netflix is sitting pretty. HBO Max is well, struggling. I do believe actually they, they just turned out like they just released some earnings or something of the sort. They were talking about, look, it's been down for a while. Netflix has been going downhill for quite a while. Right. Uh, so I guess anyone would, would have been surprised if they were to go back up and they went back up. So they seem to be riding a pretty high uh, wave right now. <laughs> Blair says they cancel the best shows then make shows like Money Heist, Asian version. Like what mm -hmm. the fuck? <laughs> yeah. No, I get it. Look, yeah, Netflix is worldwide, and they are huge. If you haven't been able to see, just for the simple fact that, like, everyone in the United States of like Asian descent of any of those countries is telling other people, and those those people tell a whole lot more people than those of us that live like in the United States, right. and so they have definitely leaned hard into their um, Asian country viewings. I, I mean. The shows that they made, the you know, they have like a whole entire subgenre of their own Korean stuff, you know. So, right. was Cowboy Bebop on Netflix? Yeah, I liked that. I liked yeah. Cowboy Bebop. That was a good show. 
they canceled that one. But mm-hmm. that's what Netflix does, man. It, it, it's the nature of the beast. And the only thing I can say is that while it sucks, like, Ross, I can talk to you about this because I've known you my whole life. How much more content do we have now than we ever had before? Like, literally, oh, yeah. literally, even though it sucks, they canceled something I liked. There's so much stuff to watch. And guess what? If there's not nothing new for you to watch, you can go back and watch anything you want to from way, way back. Way, way back. I still watch Seinfeld. I still watch Seinfeld. I don't care. Still watch Seinfeld. You just watched Game of Thrones. That's what I'm saying. That's how messed up my mind is. Yeah. So, I don't know, man. There's always stuff to watch, and that's the beauty of the world we're in, uh, is that there there will never be a lack of content. Even though they cancel things we like, there'll never be a lack of content. So Yeah. Let's hope not. You want to move on to the next show here? What's our next thing? Content. Uh, Bad Batch had number two beside it, so... Ooh. Let's talk some Bad Batch. We can make it pretty quick. There ain't a whole lot to... There's really uh, not a whole lot to talk about this week. No, this was yeah. a complete definition of a filler episode. Unless something comes back in the in, in like the future with tech being this amazing podcast racer. Or podcast, podcast racer. racer. <laughs> pod, pod racer. <laughs> um, uh, no, they were. it was a uh, riot racing, I think is what it was called. That's what they called it. To make yeah. it different, but it was pod racing. <laughs> That's what it was. That's exactly what it it's was. It's a difference between it was almost a difference between like racing and uh like uh motocross. Not motocross, but like anything motorcycle racing, you know. Okay. Okay. I l- they will put lipstick on a pig. They, I get it. I get That's it. how they do this in their animation shows. You know, they'll make one whole episode and they'll pull one little thing out of it and put it into like the, the finale arc or whatever the case may be. Um I don't want to rob it of anything because you know it had I mean, we had voices from Ben Schwartz and uh, Ernie Hudson. I mean, like there was there was so much like weight that kind of went into this, but it was a filler episode, more or less story wise. Mm-hmm. Um, if you haven't seen, it, I mean, are you familiar with Ben Schwartz at all? Probably without knowing it. I would hit, to me, I love his comedy. I love him absolutely. Love him in Parks and Rec. You talk about favorite shows, Parks and Rec may be one of my favorite comedy shows. Um, and he was also in Space Force that was on Netflix, which I is now, now okay. canceled. Um, yeah. oh, I know. <laughs> well, <laughs> but, okay, I'm not gonna lie. Space Force is good, but like it wasn't after, great. After yeah. it got done, I was like, uh, I could go. Like, I don't. They don't need to like make a second season of this. Like, it was. Yeah. It was okay. So, uh, but he played uh, Fuck Tony, is who Ben Schwartz is, mm-hmm. and so that guy's all over the place. Love him, and not only that. I mean, like we we I only. We saw two things this week that had uh, Ben Schwartz, who plays, I can't remember the name of the character that he plays in Parks and Rec, but also his sister that played in Parks and Rec. And she was the dog owner in Everything Everywhere All at Once. The big nose customer. Okay. So we got that. But as far as like Bad Batch, it was a real, they were on a planet. They, they had a race. They... You know, I don't know if I've ever known Sid's whole name, but you know, Sidarian Scaleback, and I'm like, mm, uh, uh, yeah, yeah, okay. Which ironically, she reminds me of Roseanne. We were, no, uh, <laughs> <laughs> kind of like she reminds me of Roseanne. Like, I'm no, the lie. old dinosaur show on TGIF. Oh, you remember yeah, that? the grandmother. Just like one of the characters in it. And she reminds like, me of the grandmother, kind of. She reminds me. She just fit right in that thing. Yeah, yeah, that's good. Uh, but yeah. No, you know, I liked it. Um, once again, it, it seemed like a filler episode. Uh, there, there didn't seem like a lot of meat on the potatoes here. You get a little bit of um, character That's development. John Ralphio. Tech. Thanks, Mike. Um, there you go, Mike. You get a little bit of uh, uh, character development with uh, Tech in here. But did you notice that... Uh, God, I can't even remember what the big guy's name is. What's the big Wrecker. guy's name? Wrecker. Did you notice he was eating Wrecker. in almost every frame in the show he was eating? Yeah, he's playing a. Uh, uh, well, that's kind of a Brad Pitt thing, right? I was gonna say, is Brad Pitt? It's, that's kind of what Brad Pitt um, does. He he likes to what's his name and, and interact with Fast and Furious and the second thing, one. So yeah, um, I, don't know. I gotta keep yeah, that I, metabolism I up. Yeah. So let's see. So Mike Mike hit us with the uh, the I don't want to say that name. John. John Raffio. John Raffio. Okay, and Parks mm-hmm. and Rec. And then he says, uh, oh, the he plays Kenny Omega. So you're nice guys. 
I don't know who Kenny Omega is. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. Is that me being old? I don't it, very know. Well could, it very well could be. Look at all this gray. I'm, I'm fine. Right. With it. <laughs> well, I hide it with a lot of red, but there's a lot of gray in here too. If you zoom in close, but, um, <coughs> but yeah, man, Bad Batch. Like I said, th- this it's a 24 minute episode. Like so, it's hard unless there's like storyline going on that pushes the Star Wars story forward. It's hard to talk about this show. This show, this episode definitely didn't. Like it maybe gave you a little progression with Tech. It had absolutely no progression with any other character. Um, you know, it, it was a basically a villain of the week pod racing scene with uh, Ving Rhames as an animated character betting somebody that they wouldn't win. You know? Yeah, well, I don't think there, there were. There, that's it. He described it. And we're done with the Bad Batch. <laughs> yeah. Bam, there you go. Uh, all it. right. I, I'm, I'm cool to be done with it because, like I said, there's really not much to talk about this week. Let's go ahead yeah. and go to... Uh, okay, we're going to save Last of Us for last. Sounds right. Let's talk about everything, everywhere, all at once. Yeah, we were a little late to this one. I had it on my list for quite a while to watch. I wanted to go see it in theaters, and when it was out, I couldn't make it to the theater to go see it. And so... I really got ticked off because I thought that they were showing it. And you remember like years ago, like when, um, yeah, Revenge of the Sith, I believe it was, it was in theaters and like uh, someone said that they were playing a new hope and I'm like, Oh, new hopes in theaters. You and me, we're going to go see it. Let's go. And then it was Revenge of the Sith. And like, we weren't upset because we were both going to still sit down in the movie theater and watch it's a better it. movie. But yeah. Yeah. And so what, you know, I kind of had the same type of thing to where like, I'm like, oh, it's still showing somewhere. Like I called him up. I'm like, I just want to make sure they're like, oh, no, like that's a typo. That was supposed to be changed two weeks ago. I'm like, what? I'm never going <laughs> to see this movie. And of course, like it came out um, streaming wise. But I don't think that I remember ever seeing it for rent. I know that's not for rent now because it's on Showtime. And like you said, every streaming platform has a like Showtime add on, which Let's just give Showtime a little bit of like accolades here and say that why doesn't anyone else do that? Right. Oh, they, they, <laughs> they, yeah, dude. They they are definitely like uh, coattailing off everybody else. Yeah, they and they have their, their own, own platform. platform. And you know the thing is, they're like, I, okay, I subscribe to Showtime. I watch this movie, then I unsubscribed. Well, guess what? Showtime doesn't care. They got five bucks out of it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> they don't care if they can do. You that should off, have off. it for the whole month, should you not? Well, you can cancel anytime you want to. Okay. So I, I, I could have it for the whole time I want to, but I just, I, it, I don't know why. I, I subscribe to so many things. Like, I've got plenty of stuff to watch. I'm not too worried about it. Um, yeah, so this movie, it's funny with this movie because I didn't realize this was an, kind of an older movie or like, it, not older, but like it's, it's been out for a while. Like, where I work, I work at the post office. And, Give me one minute. You go ahead and talk about it. You're good. I work at the post office and there's a, uh, you know, I have, I'm a regular, so I have my own route and I'm on the same route every single day for the last four years and probably for the next 37 of my life. So I'm on the same route every single day. Well, other people who have not made that status yet are not like that. So I have a guy like the route beside me is an open route. So I have a different person on every day. So I talk to a different person every day beside me while I'm casing my mail every single day. Well, the guy I'm talking to that day is telling me, he's like, man, he's like, I know you do a podcast. He's like, I just saw a really good movie. You should check out. He's called everything everywhere all at once. And I was like, Oh, tell me about it. So he told me about it. I was like, okay, that sounds pretty cool. I'll check it out in Showtime. And then literally, like, later that night when I was talking to Ross, he was like, yeah, I want to see this movie, everything, everywhere, all at once. So I said, okay, we need to cover it then. Like, there's no way that came into my life that I've never heard of at the same day, at the same point in time, and I can't watch it. So at that point, I said, okay, this is a movie we're covering because two times in one day, it didn't happen for no reason. So we decided to check it That's out. That's uh, Yeah. Showtime is the way to get it. So if you want to check it out, Showtime is, is the way to look at it. Um, and there's Showtime apps, like me and Monster are talking about, or add-ons on a few different streaming services. If you go to Paramount Plus, you know you pay for the add-on, watch the movie. If you want to, everyone has it. If you want to hang out with uh, Showtime after that, you can because they may have some good content. I haven't checked it out yet, but you could always just kind of use that as a rental, you know. But let's get into this movie. This movie is. I described it as Matrix and uh, Inception. What did you say yesterday in the chat in, in the uh, text, Ross? I believe I said it was a cross between Matrix, Kung Fu Hustle, and uh, oh, what Multiverse of Madness should have been. 
Okay. Okay, yeah. And and honestly, I think if you add all that together and put it in one little pot, you're right there. Like, yeah. you were right there on it. Like, my friend Austin at work told me to watch this, and I remember I spoke to Ross. I said, okay, let's do it. We're going to watch it. We're going to talk about it tomorrow night. Um, I started watching this movie, and, like, the first 10 minutes in, I was like, what the fuck am I watching? Like, it does not seem good. Then there's the one scene where you see the husband in the background. And he starts doing in, in the on, on the uh, security cameras, yep. and he starts doing the kung fu stuff and switching around. I was like, okay, this movie's gonna go somewhere. And literally from that point on, it might be one of the craziest movies I've ever seen, like ever. Like I'm not gonna lie, if you watch this movie, you have to pay attention to the entire thing, or you will not get it. And quite honestly, I don't know if I fully got it. I really don't. I may have to go back and watch it again, but I feel like I did, and I was kind of proud of myself. Like, I got to be on a test, you know? Like, I was like, okay, I think I understood this. So, there's a lot going on. But it's basically a multiverse movie. It's, think Matrix. Think yeah. people who are in a world where they can go to other worlds and universes in the same time. Through technology and through different avenues. Or, I guess, yeah, avenues. Um, and people in this other world are unaware of it. You know? I, I'm i going to spoil it. So, if you yeah, plan if, on watching it, if you give me a couple it, of minutes. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're definitely spoiling it. Yeah, <laughs> definitely spoiling I, it. Five minutes and I'll try my best to shut up about it. Um, here it goes. The whole entire story, the the little pieces that they tell you about are, are fantastic to pick up to the main point. Because I don't know if you noticed this, they at one point had uh, the husband was talking about the lyrics to the um, story of a girl song. Okay. This is the story of a girl, you know, mm -hmm. who cried a river and drowned the whole world. Like he was sitting there doing the lyrics about it. And so this movie is about how far away you can get from your family while still being present and then needing to come back to the family unit. Okay. The way that they tell this story and tell something like that is so well done because just like you're describing <clears throat> what it is, is a, every decision that you make branches off its own timeline. Mm -hmm. And so if you decide to wake up versus lying in bed and, you know, go do something positive with your day or be lazy all day, mm -hmm. that one decision will spawn off countless other decisions and they, they just keep creating this whole entire, it almost looks like the way they're showing it on the movie as a neural network of choices and spider each web. one spawns yeah. its own. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Chaotic spider web, but each yeah. one spawns its own um, version of you. What I didn't like is that they limited what they actually showed main wise. But they had some scenes in there, like where they had like the animated version, you know, them as pin pinatas, them as rocks. I thought the rock part was so good. The rock good. part was good. Hot dog fingers. Hot dog. Why? <laughs> I, I, I get it. I get fingers. it. You know, they helped to world. explain it. Yeah. They helped to explain it. But yeah. man, like, wow. Um, that yeah, hot dog ahead. finger world was simply for the uh, audit agent. So that way she could convince yeah. her that she could be loved. That, Which that was, let's that was talk the about reason. Jamie Lee Curtis. Oh, like, oh, was that Jamie Lee Curtis? Holy shit. Now that you say that, you're right. You didn't that know was, that was Jamie. No, I didn't. But now that you said that, <laughs> I know now I can see that face. I'm like, holy shit. I thought I recognized yeah. her. I didn't recognize. Oh, my gosh. That was Jamie Lee Curtis. Holy shit. Yeah. Oh, wow. Wow. What a great job then. <laughs> like, yeah. that makes me impressed even more by the role based on that being Jamie Lee Curtis, just because of who, the, the way she looked and the way she acted. Wow. That's crazy. Uh, everyone, though. I mean, I. Look at how good Short Round did in this movie. You know, Short I mean, Round was in this movie too. He was, was the he, husband. Was, he was the husband. That was Short Round. <laughs> Holy shit! I'm learning all kinds of things right now. Wow. Okay. Cool. <coughs> That's great. That's awesome. This movie's even okay. better now. The uh, I'll make one more point, but the the, the main actress uh, Michelle, I can't remember her last name right now. Fantastic. Yo, I think Y O U. Either way, she has a she has an entire 
catalog of movies that she's done right. and she has been she's like the female jackie chan she does all of her own stunts she's magnificent not only she's that you uh, job, you yeah. watched uh we got you hooked on the star trek stuff you watched um oh what's the one with um michael as the captain michael as the captain yeah spock's you know, spock's uh sister or half sister or whatever the case was oh, maybe i've seen that one yeah, you have. Um, okay. Oh man, card. What? No, not no. Picard. It's not the card. Uh, it's not Strange New Worlds. It's the other one. Uh, Discovery. There you Discovery. go. Discovery. Okay, I've, I've seen bits and pieces of that. I have. That was one. It wasn't one that I jumped fully on. So okay, but only well, not only in, but in the first and I think second season, uh, she plays the captain. She plays the captain that ends up being like the the bad character in a different universe. Either way, she's okay. all over the place. Um, but the story itself was, it's really a story about, <laughs> I mean, just how you need to reconnect with like your loved ones. How you need to be right. there with your people. And like, that's what it's about. But the mm -hmm. way that they go about telling it is so fantastic. Mm -hmm. And I love that because it's the, it's, it's the, it's the plot that you least expect to tell something as moving and as meaning as what they do. Mm hmm so that's what i appreciate from it it's cool because like this story is told in three parts and like the first part everything is 45 minutes everything everywhere is like 45 minutes then like all at once it's like eight minutes mm -hmm. so it kind of blew me away when that happened because like i was watching the movie and i knew they did the first part and then the second part and i was like this movie's almost over and hadn't gotten the third part yet so i don't know if it was going to be a sequel or what but yeah the third part's only like eight minutes but it wraps it up nice and tight like they do a good job of explaining everything. Uh, the actress, you're right, once again, uh, who played the, the lead role. <laughs> what a great job. Not just the kung fu and everything else she did, which, by the way, was phenomenal scenes. Really, really awesome fight scenes. Like, who could think that a fanny pack could be so badass? Yeah. You know? Um, but not only that, like, just the emotional acting she did in these movies, in this movie, is, is great. Like, you could see the emotion in her face. You could feel it. Like you, 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 I, I felt for this character yep. and I understood kind of where she was coming from. Um, the daughter was made to be a little less understandable in this movie. Yeah. Um, angsty teenager. Yeah. Angsty, th that's kind of what she was, you know, she, she nailed that role, but um, all in all, man, I think they did a great job with this movie. Who is the guy that played the grandfather? He's the guy that plays in. He oh plays yeah. In no, film. he's all over the stuff. He's too. all over the place, man. He was in a, my, my favorite movie with him is a, uh, gotta be uh balls of fury <laughs> like, I, like i love him in balls of fury man that's such a great movie he was in what was was he in no he must have been in all the chris tucker movies i keep thinking of money talks because we watched that one so many times but not money talks it was uh the, uh, the rush, hour, rush movies. hour movies yeah 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 but they, they did a really, really good job, man. And honestly, I think the reason why I related to this movie so much is because, like, you know, time travel and multiverses kind of go hand in hand with rules and, and how they roll. And, like, the way I look at things, I kind of look at life like that. That, like, if there is a multiverse, if, like, there honestly is an infinite number of universes based on decisions, that's kind of what it is. Like, every decision you make, wake up or wake up and go to work, call in sick. Uh, do the podcast or not, uh, you know, throw the dice or not. Like, like those all change and every decision you make breaks off into an alternate universe and all things can happen. I kind of believe that if there's a multiverse, that's the way it is. Yeah. So it has I to be all the way they portrayed it, you know? Yeah. Like, but I do, I do love how in this universe they picked it out to, okay. So in this universe, they can jump, right? Okay. We hadn't even really gone over the whole basis of it. So this is a sci-fi movie where there is there are characters in a multiverse, okay? And these characters in this multiverse, was, which they call the Alphaverse, the first verse to travel to another universe, okay, are trying to fight an evil that's going to destroy the universe. That's the premise of the movie, okay? So they have to jump from multiverse to multiverse. And by doing so, you have to pick a point that I assume would be a point that would stand out I like very, very much so that you could remember and pinpoint, like telling somebody you love them, singing, maybe jumping on a butt plug, stuff like that. 
<laughs> you know, so, the butt plugs. <laughs> yeah. so th- there, there are certain <laughs> things that you would have to do to identify to be able to jump to the right point. And I, I thought about that and I was like, that's actually pretty smart. Even though I may not agree with every way they tended to do it. Uh, I like the idea that eating that. chapstick, so, yeah, yeah, eating chapstick, eating gum under the table, stuff you would specifically remember to be able to pull out of a point in time that you did that, that a version of you did, you know, I, I like that. That was pretty cool. Although I, I'm not going to admit a lie. Like when I saw the first scene with the auditor and she has the award and she's like, how do you think you get these? And she points to all three of them. And I was like, those are butt plugs. Yep. Like, I don't know if they're doing that as a joke. But those are tons plugs. of lube. Yeah. That's how you get those. <laughs> and then literally later on, one of the way they're jumping is to jump on these butt plugs, which old boy does a uh, macho man elbow drop with his ass onto this butt plug. And it's pretty, uh, <laughs> pretty crazy. But I mean, I guess if your life depended on it, I don't know. Um, big fight with dildos. Which for no for no reason at all, like for no reason at all, they have this scene with these huge well, two foot dildos in them that she's fighting but with. We got to get back to the main story here, and the main story was the daughter. And so in mm-hmm. Alphaverse, she the, too, the um, the mother kept pushing the daughter because she kept seeing how she was able to uh, traverse what they were calling all these multiverses. And so when she kept pushing her and pushing her and pushing her. It was that sense of like, if you keep pushing your children, then, you know, it's at some point something really bad can come of that. And this literally had that something bad because the daughter was the, uh, the antagonist of the movie. And so, which is why I go back to that whole story of a girl song, because it is the story of a girl. It's a story of a mother and a daughter and all the little, um, things that they put in here to actually portray all of that across the board was just so well done because that was the main point. Like don't push your kids. Like it's all about like acceptance. Yes. I know you can't just like let your kids wander aimlessly without giving them some sort of helpful direction to actually grow in and live life in. There's a fine line though. Yeah. But you have to be able to let them be their own person. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's where the antagonist was created from was because in, in some some universe, some way that they, she kept pushing, pushing and pushing her daughter. And then mm-hmm. to the very end, which was all at once, the, the key to this whole entire movie was recognizing that what's important is right here, right now. And like, you are you, I am me. We make these decisions. Like, let's make the best one we can to move forward. And that's right. what they did was they basically, you know, the mother, chose acceptance beyond everything else. So the daughter was reluctant to it because it was fresh and new. And so mm-hmm. it was a real tight, like they said, it was like eight minutes. It was just a real quick thing that they needed to wrap up. And they did, they did really well. Very, very well written movie. Like this is one of the things Ashley came home right at the beginning of the, uh, all at once scene. And oh, she asked really? me, she's like, yeah, she's like, what are you watching? And I was like, I'm watching this movie. I was like, but I'm sorry, I can't talk to you. I've got to pay attention to this. And she was like, well, I don't want to see the end of it. I was like, well, then don't look. <laughs> I, was like, <laughs> I was like, don't look, because I'm watching the end of this, and I've got to pay attention to the end of this. Um, but you really do. Like, I, I look, you should want to watch all of every movie you watch. But there are movies where you can kind of dick around for a minute, you know, in a scene or whatever. This is not one of them. Like you need to watch everything that happens and be fully attentive to what's going on. And it's not a homework assignment. It's because it's a good movie and I yep. want to understand what's going on. You know, the story makes full it's sense. It's intriguing. That's exactly the, word. The, the story makes full sense. If you understand the story exactly. Like I, I was wrapped in the story. Like I said, Ashley was kind of mad at me because for eight <laughs> minutes, I'm sorry. I know you just got home, but for eight minutes, <laughs> I'm watching no. this. Yeah. Like, I've got to figure out what happens here. Don't look if you want to watch the movie, but I've got to figure out what happens here. So, um, a really, really good watch. Like, I'm really happy with it. Is that when I first started watching it, the first 10 minutes, I'm like, what the fuck am I watching? Like, I thought I was watching some kind of drama, and it kind of is. Um, but, <laughs> Greg's but like, turn off the subtitles. I'm like, but I watch everything with subtitles on. What are you talking too. about? He's like, I've I done do. more reading oh, than I have reco- ever. High recommendation. Don't watch it with subtitles. Like, it, and it may be my TV. Like it may not be yours. It may be my TV, the because there's a lot of this movie that's spoken in Chinese that you have to read. So there's a lot of reading this movie, and while they're speaking in Chinese, 
if your subtitles are on, it'll cover it up with like music going on in the background. Oh, Character that's drops why this. you said that. And I was like, okay, I can't see what they're saying because the subtitles are covering up the background noise. So I had to turn the subtitles off. Mm-hmm. I love watching things with subtitles because you catch a lot of new things you wouldn't otherwise, at least I don't otherwise hear. But in this movie, I had to just turn the volume up, pay attention, and cut the subtitles off. Watch it like it was, you know, 1994. So, <laughs> I mean, uh, but yeah, I mean, I really, really enjoyed it. I would highly recommend it to anybody. Check it out on Showtime if you get a chance. It was what? It was hour and 20 minutes? So, no, no, no. Probably no. two hours and 20 minutes. Yeah, it wasn't super. Yeah. 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 I think Fairly. it was 220, but there's a whole bunch of it at the end. Yeah. So, I mean, it, it was an average movie, but uh, mindfuck, man. Serious mindfuck. Mm-hmm. Like, go into it uh, expecting a little bit of comedy. There's really good comedic points put at certain points. Oh, yeah. um, there's great action. There's really good acting, and the story is on point. It's an Not overall hard. really, really good story. You know? But. Recommend it. Watch it if you haven't. Ross, I'm going to. Uh, well, is there anything else you want to say about? No, nah, go ahead and like let's. We'll be done spoiling it. I think okay. that's. Um, okay. Well, sorry train... if you. Yeah, sorry, right. sorry if you hadn't seen it yet. But hey, even if you hadn't seen it yet, we didn't spoil it that much. You can still go back yeah, and watch yeah, it. It's yeah. gonna be really good. I promise. Um, we just kind of spoiled the butt plugs and the dildos. So, um, well, look, I've got a train passing by right now. I'm gonna go message Kevin, tell him to come back in to the chat room because we're done talking about this. Get us started on uh, The Last of Us, okay? All right. For all me, right. I feel like this is the next Game of Thrones. This is the next uh, Walking Dead. This is the next big thing that people are going to be around the TV on Sundays for the next few years excited to watch. So go with it. Uh, very much the pickoff point right there. Um, HBO has been known for their their Sunday shows. Uh, those are the things that have, have kept them moving, you know, since Sopranos, The Wire, like all, all that stuff way back then. What you, we're in a place now where we've, we've passed Game of Thrones, you know, I don't want to say HBO got tired, but HBO is doing a whole lot of reorganization with um, not only all of their stuff technically, but also trying to figure out what their stories were going to be going forward. HBO has been tossed around from owner to owner. And so their creative department keeps shifting at the same time, you know, that's what you're basically just describing with the HBO um, Max. Well, I guess all of HBO right now. This was poised a couple years ago to be the next big thing. Um, I've been saying it for many, many weeks now, if not months, that we are on the cusp of the game entertainment revolution. Whereas the things that we're watching movies and TV wise are going to be derivative from games. There's a lot on the frontier that we're going to see. And there's a lot already that we've, you know, pay attention to, you know, last year we talked about halo. That was a real big one for Paramount plus to come out with. And they did it pretty well. Mm -hmm. Now. Wasn't perfect. um, It was good. Yeah. 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 Last of us is a PlayStation exclusive. I have heard so many people talk about it. I am not a gamer. I will play certain games, but I am not a gamer. Last of Us is one that I heard people talk about so passionately that it made me want to play it. Um, I heard a year or two after I kind of felt that, that they were going to come out with the show. And I kind of stopped because, once again, I'm a major gamer, so it wasn't at the top of my list to play the game. But at the same time, I did want to enjoy what they were going to make if it was going to come to fruition to actually to, to see it on the screen. The last of us is supposed to run in tandem with the multitude of game of Thrones shows that they're going to be releasing. So house of dragon, uh, the eventual Jon snow show, they had another so one that they're was gonna canceled have something every Sunday, basically to come out. You're going to be watching plan. You're going to be watching this or this or this, but Sunday night's going to be HBO Max night. That's what brings those subs, man. No, I agree. You know, yeah, people it's come in. They need to, it's a good plan. Yeah. yeah. Cause Sunday but night they, is traditionally a night that everybody's going to be at home. Yeah. 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 Like most people you know, will be the, at home Sunday night. Only thing they're going to be up against is the Super Bowl, <laughs> you know, which I'm yeah. not even sure they're airing. That's the last of us is going to be nine episodes. Uh, we know that like, you know me, I'm a real big episode counter or anything that comes out. Anything that we're watching, I know how many episodes it's going to be. I know when the episodes are going to drop. And I, 
because once again, Rebels really ticked me off on that. And ever since right. then, I've been real big on knowing when it's going to come out, how many episodes, and what am I expecting? Um, Last of Us, I think, has been talked about for two years. So relatively pretty short versus now that it's on screen. What we got this past weekend was something that I've heard a lot of people talk about. But not just that. I expected a lot of people to talk about it. I haven't heard anything negative about it. No, I haven't either. Like everybody I've talked to has loved it so yeah. far. Yeah. And that's one of those um, shows that like everybody loves, you know, Pedro Pascal made me believe the 20 year time jump, uh, the life that he was living. They were in Texas. He had a daughter, all of these things that, Oh, three, baby, by the way, just, you know, yeah. oh, three, yeah, graduation well, year. Well, yeah. actually, look, I don't even know, I'm not even starting there. I need to start at the very beginning because at the very beginning, they were in 68, I think was when that talk show when was. The scientists talking. And they have that conversation. And like those two, you know, it was Big Head from Silicon Valley and God, I can never remember the other guy's name, but the two of them were having that back and forth. And he's just talking about mushrooms. And I'm like, I buy it. I no, buy it, what he's it, talking it's about. It's 100% plausible. Yeah. 100%, and not, yeah. only, not only do I buy it, but they, they want to sit there and talk about how they're going to bring in, um, you know, global warming and like how that's going to be a thing that like just uh, is the Bunsen burner that ignites the whole thing and turns it into a chemical reaction. Like it works. The only thing that I struggled with was watching that and then trying to believe that 20 years after that started is that global warming would be such a big thing with like population dying down. Not, not that it would be a big thing, but like it wouldn't have like adverse reactions to all that. Mm -hmm. So I like the beginning. I like the shot they had in uh, Texas with him, the family, his brother, you know, like really living like a, a life, you know, his brother got arrested. It wasn't apparently like the first time he's like this time I didn't do anything wrong. So you're led to believe that, you know, his brother can be a troublemaker sometimes. Um, they work construction because, you know, you're in Texas. They, they're trying to make ends too, meet. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know the story well enough to know what happened to the mother. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm hoping like we learn all these things, but that's kind of why when I heard that they were making the show, I didn't want to jump immediately into playing it. Man, that, and I didn't have a PlayStation. But uh, for them to turn around and have, yeah, well, it is. <laughs> um, I haven't played mine in years, so I don't know. For that. I, didn't want to, I didn't want to know too much before. Um, before getting the chance to just like enjoy it all the first time. I rarely say that I'm tainted by like multiple versions of a thing because like, I'm pretty well even headed enough to go into something and not take like a whole bunch of like other stuff with it. Like with the Marvel and Star Wars shows, you know, since there's so much of it and since it's, a lot of it's so different, you got to take bits and pieces of it, but you can't take the whole thing or else like the, the premise won't work for something new. Last of Us is brand new to the screen. So if you take everything in that you had from the video game, it's going to be a problem for some people. Mm. It's not a problem for me because I didn't do it. Mm. I think that the, oh, actually, go ahead. Oh, I've been talking I, about it nonstop. <laughs> no, you're good. I was going to say, I, I, I'm not like, okay. You know me, Ross. I'm not a horror fan. Okay, so like growing up, zombies, that kind of stuff, it wasn't for me. It's not that it's not good. It's just like I don't like horror. I don't like. I have. I, I could have nightmares from things I watch. So I just don't like horror, and I don't like the natural act of something that's naturally evil. Like I, I guess the 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 best way to describe it would be like something like The Exorcist or. Uh, um, I don't know, man. There's a bunch of just horror movies. It's the just opposition to the belief in something like God. Yeah. Like, yeah like if God yeah, is 100% like, positive. Like you don't want to believe in something 100% negative. Right. Which is funny because yeah. uh, anyway, like, like I, I just, I'm just not a huge fan of that, you know? Um, but I give things a chance. Uh, but then, you know, um, I am legend came out and it's got Will Smith and it's good. It's a good book. Um, so I was like, okay, let me give this a chance. I loved it. And then, a few, about good. a year and a half, two years ago, me and Ashley binged Walking Dead. And I was like, oh, man, what did I miss out on? But I got to watch it all at once. But what did I miss out on? Holy shit. So I'm like, okay, zombies, I'm going to give a chance. Then you throw zombies in there with Pedro Pascal, 
who, by the way, has never gotten less than an 86% on Rotten Tomatoes on anything he's ever been in, which is a pretty good, <laughs> a pretty good record. Even though I'm Rotten Tomatoes mean, means shit. But I mean, it's it's pretty, pretty fun to say. And then the girl from uh, the girl that killed the giant in uh, Game of Thrones. Lady Mormont. Yeah. Uh, I was like, okay, cool. Give me these two. So I told Ashley, I was like, this is a, this is a show we've got to watch. I told her, this is the next big thing. Like, I promise you when you go to work every, every week, they're going to, people are going to be talking about this show. We need to be into this for once in the last 15 years. We need to be hip. Like, let's do it. Oh, I thought you were going to say, I need to be right. <laughs> oh, no, I'm never right. But we need to be hip. So let, let, let's keep up with this show as long as it's going on, you know? Uh, so we watched the first episode and it was funny because when, when the first part started in 2003, I saw him and his daughter and like, I was watching it and I said, you know what? I've never seen any promos with his daughter in it. And this is a flashback. And I looked at Ashley and I said, you know, she's going to die, right? And Ashley was like, what do you, what do you mean she's going to die? I was like, rob this your is a, poor wife of that. I said, this is a flashback. I said, he's got to have a reason to hate something. I was like, she's going to die. And then sure enough, it happened. And, and Ashley was crying. I get it. She's emotional. She's into these kind of things, you know, and I laugh about it. So that way I probably would cry if I didn't laugh about it. You know, um, I make jokes about it. Uh, I don't laugh about somebody dying. I'm sorry. I make jokes to, to but, but, uh, but as soon as that happened, I was like, yep, we're into the show. I was like, if she's that emotionally invested and I have to make a joke. So that way I don't feel like I want to cry. I was like, I'm invested in this show. So here we go. And Pedro Pascal, man. Although I will say the first 10 minutes watching this series, I could not think anything of Mandalorian. He sounded like the Mandalorian in the first few minutes of the series. Like I was like, you sound just fucking like him. And I get you are him, but I, ha I had to pull myself out of that for a second. And now he sold me on this. So I'm loving it so far, man. Um, let's get into it. I guess the flashback scene, like this is our year. Well, this is 2003. It set the premise. Yeah. Like it, it set the premise for the story as far as uh, like who, the life he was living, he had a daughter, you know, like not only did he have a daughter, but you turn around and talk about the, uh, the beginning versus the end of the show. And a lot of people have talked about, you know, we're always late doing the show on Friday versus a show that comes out on Sunday. Um, people all over have had that discussion of how he gets from being the father who cares absolutely about his daughter is trying to do everything he can numbingly to make ends meet, but is there, you know, with his daughter, even though that he showed up late and he didn't have a cake, which was a whole nother part. Um, he was there, you know, like they sat down, they were watching movies. He, he gave her the freedom to be a teenager and to sit there and do all the things that she knew she needed to do. And she didn't really seem like she was doing anything to backstab or take advantage of, I guess, probably mm -hmm. a better way of saying it. Well, and so, neighbor's gift, but you know, oh well. But even thing. then, she's like, you know, I, she I gave, return, she the, the, I return the change. Right. You know, yeah. I'm an honest thief. Um, but then at the end, you know, where you have, which once again, people spoilers. I know everyone's seen it. Um, you have Ellie, and look, the only part of the whole entire scene that bothered me was how Ellie looked like a hype man during a fight. And everyone okay. keeps saying, <laughs> I can get that. <laughs> everyone get that. kept saying that, you know, like she, even at the end of the episode, <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> like the, you up, yeah, the post part, you know, because she was sitting there and she was like, like trying to get like the best view. And I'm come like, at me, bro, come at me, trying bro. to hype this fight up. Get me outside. You don't need to like, <laughs> get me outside, pretty much. And like, yeah. that was the only thing that bothered me. Like, the rest of it, I completely understood and was there and was completely present right. for. Um, Watching him, because you can't not feel the the trauma there when that happens. Mm -hmm. um, there's another young girl present. You know, you see you see in the situation, someone with a gun is pointing the gun at them, and so it turns into a whole nother thing. And I'm just like, wow, like they went full course in this one episode mm -hmm. just to get you hooked on that whole that the flavor of like what's happening. Mm -hmm. It's so easy, honestly, for me to relate to this character because, like, look, I'm not going to lie. As a father of a daughter, of two daughters, you know, a father of girls, like, you see things in media that you relate to. And, like, one for me, 
Ant-Man 1. Like the first Ant-Man movie, that relationship with him and Cassie, uh, Ant-Man and the first meeting back with his daughter in uh, Endgame, like those moments literally tug at my heart because my daughter's the same age as Cassie in those movies. So it's like me with her. And the same kind of feelings he has is the same kind of thing I feel. This show is the only thing that's made me kind of feel like that, that I can really remember. Like that moment with him and his daughter, not the moment where she died, but just like his relationship with his daughter in the, in the flashback, that's me and my daughter. Like that's us. I saw so much of that. She's the same age. He looks about the same age as me. The relationship, the way they acted, the way he, like his responses, I was like, that's me and Summer right there, like 100%. And then so for that moment where she got shot, it wasn't it, it it did tug at my heart. So I had to make a joke with Ashley. So I didn't feel like I wanted to cry. But Ashley okay. started crying. Like the relationship was fantastic. They do a great job with that. Um the, you can really pull a lot of people in with that father-daughter connection. And maybe yeah. because my daughter's relatively I assume she was about a sophomore junior in high school. My daughter's a sophomore in high school. So I I, I assume it's about what she was. You know, um, it just it just connected, man. And right away, I was like, I feel this, you know. And the second the second they pulled the trigger, I was like, oh, she's dead. I was like, oh, she's dead. There's no way. There's no way she's going to live. Um, so who do we got? We got we got Joel. And is it Veronica or is it Ellie? Well, her name is Ellie. Ellie. I mean, she was going she by, was by Veronica. Veronica. Okay. Another so name. Joel and Ellie are going to probably be our two main characters going forward. Right. So it seems, you know, I mean, like we, you know, there's a lot of uh, pieces to the story that uh, other people know that, you know, I don't know. And I'm going into this only believing what I see on screen because I'm not looking for them to, to make a complete remake of the game. I'm thinking that they're going to pay enough homage to, to keep everyone going into it. But, you know, he's after his brother. Um, oh, Tess. Is like his girlfriend, you know, this seems to be, which I love the actress. I, I see her in all sorts of things that she's fantastic. in. she was in watch the fringe way back when she was the main actress in the fringe. But I mean, like she's aged like in all sorts of different things that she's done since then. Um, and then, you know, there's different, the, Oh my Lord, I'm blanking on the other girl's name. Uh, Marlene is the only one that, voiced the character that actually played the character, I believe is what okay. the, what they were saying. And so oh, you have all these other the characters in the game. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Wow. That's pretty cool. She did a great job acting. Yeah. Like I loved her in the show. Like great role. Hmm. I, I have to agree with, um, what Valerian was saying about, um, not enjoying the, the, the Bella Ramsey right off the bat, the way that he was pushing her or the way that they were pushing her story was way too much. Um, you were given the opportunity to appreciate the relationship between Sarah and Joel, and mm-hmm. then it was taken away. And then you're thrust into Ellie being a captive right off the bat and completely just like, you know, like pissed off teenager right about the situation, right. which I get. I, don't, I mean, if you're going to come into the situation like that, feel like there's going to be some sort of turmoil right off the bat the oh, downside yeah. is, is that you don't get to see the innocence um as much as they're, they're forcing the they're not forcing it they're trying to give you the innocence of a child through a different manner and one of those is at the end where she pops red and you know the other two are green they're infection free but she has mm-hmm. the infection you know you you see her already fight or flight whereas mm-hmm. the innocence is the arms like look i'm not infected yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. So like that's, it's just a different take on it. You know, they're, they're choosing, s- choosing certain types of storytelling ways in a manner that I probably wouldn't completely agree with, but I've only watched the first episode. Right. So I'm not going to, you know, I'm going to do like I normally do. Give it a chance. Yeah. yeah. That's right. Okay. So I'm going to, I'm going to summarize this whole story and then wrap it up to where we're at at the end here. So, Basically, this is a zombie story. It's a zombie apocalypse story where bacteria has taken over humans and not it's, bacteria, they, fungus or fungus, excuse me, where they have described it as like LSD, where it can control your mind. And 
in doing so, it controls these humans to have different desires and do different things. And we're calling them zombies. It's a different version of zombies, okay? Flashback to when it starts, 20 years later, okay? You see society, which I believe society would still exist. You know, Ashley was telling me uh, there was the one scene where they're throwing people in the burn pits. And I guess there are people that are infected or that died in the burn pits. And she was like, there's absolutely no way I could do that. And I looked at her and I said, no. I said, right now you say that. I said, but if you went through a zombie apocalypse and you absolutely had to to survive and 20 yeah. years later, I was like, you'd figure it away. You'd either figure it away or you'd die. That, that's all there is to it. And I hate to say that to her. I was like, but that's the way it is. You'd either figure it away or you'd die. That's the only other option. So I like the way that they, they, they do that. Um, but we're brought to a point where we see a, a, a breakout in 2003 brings us to present day and now we have what appears to be a female who is um impervious to bites because obviously she's been bitten in the arm which they do make it a point to show there's a scale like in the neck it's two to four hours in the arm it's like well, five 15 five. minutes in the arm it's two to eight hours and two to eight hours. Foot, okay. it was 12 to 24 hours i actually okay, saved yeah. that picture because it had like the name okay. of the virus and everything yeah. on it there yeah. you go so, so, so she's been bitten in the arm, and you see that as the show goes on, they have her captive, and they're continually testing her every day. Well, she's obviously past this point of being infected, so she has to be three weeks. I guess the next step in evolution, would you say? I mean, honestly, like uh, uh, impervious to the most common virus that or would adaption. Take society. Yeah, yeah, an adaption to to evolution. So, so now she is the prize they have to get out. The cool thing about it is they've not only got that, but they've thrown in the fact that, and this would be real, there are sanctioned governments, or a sanctioned government, at least in America, that's trying to take control, which it would. And there are people who are tribes and groups and leaders that are wanting to have be free and have their own faith, which I promise you, if the apocalypse ever happened, that's exactly the way it would be. Oh, yeah. Exactly. The, except I feel like it would be less structured government it would be the biggest tribe wins type thing. Well, the, the, uh, the, the thing about the government is it always comes back to when you keep brainwashing people in the military to, you know, uh, as the bad batch says, you know, good soldiers follow orders. You, you have that, you have that built in structure right there already ready to go in the event of an emergency, because like, let's talk about it. There's a whole reason why preppers are preppers and that comes from the simple fact that they were trained a certain way to, to they were brought up a certain way they lived a certain type of lifestyle whether or not they had military family members or people that lived off the grid or they were actually military themselves that is a large part of that mentality and so when you already have all that baked in here you have the military taking over you still have helicopters flying you still have you know a, a full patrol you know basically garrisons outfitted with weapons and everything else but it wasn't so much that it was feeling walk of the dead to me. Did you ever watch revolution? No revolution was a really good show. And I got a lot of vibes from about revolution from this. And that was when the power went out and like, you know, like power ceased to exist in the world. Mm -hmm. And so how everything kind of grows back after that, but revolution, a lot of people didn't die other than like from uh, man-made trouble. So there wasn't like a, virus or fungal infection or anything else it keep, keeps kind of going around um he keeps bringing this up and so i want to talk about this now yeah i do too yeah good bring it, it up it was a lot more than just the cookies you know they, they make the comment to where it's um she went to the city a lot right they went to the city health. you know yeah. she was in the hospital she kept going you know to her nurse appointments so on and so forth but there's a scene where you know she's sitting there and like you know the the daughter or whoever the housekeeper whatever the the other woman's name is they there, no, the the son, I guess, was cramming the, the biscuits into the mouth. And he's like, he says, you know, do you want biscuits? And the daughter's like, oh, he loves biscuits. And Joel's like, yeah, I'm on Atkins. Oh, yeah. No, there is yeah. that whole point. And then there was a, the next point to where it's not just about the biscuits. It turns into making the cookies. And she's like, you know, uh, Sarah's like, you know, what kind of cookies are you going to make? And when you say raisin cookies, you know, it's a tough sell to a lot of people. Like, uh, I'd eat raisin cookies. I'm not a raisin cookie person. Uh. However, I don't mind wine, but I'm not a big raisin person. I'm that guy, um, I guess. So on the other side of it, they didn't eat, Sarah didn't eat the cookies. And then 
on the, to, you know, turn it into a trifecta, it was the birthday cake. He was supposed to bring home a birthday cake for himself, mainly for his daughter to eat. Right. And he didn't do so. So the actual theory runs around uh, fungal infection or the, the spores actually traveling through uh, flour or something of that sort. You know, oh, a okay. massive carrier okay. that can kind of, because you know, I fungus is that. big yeah. with the spores. And so okay. that's how, you know, various types of mold and like all this stuff. Cause I mean, you know, fungus is mold and mm -hmm. it turns into all these different types of things, you know, as someone with a background who in culinary, who knows a little thing about cheese and, you know, I, was how say, I, I can't age. believe they didn't use cheese to be honest with you. Like I thought that was a very obvious it takes answer. too long. Yeah, I guess. So. so flour was a real quick spreader. Yeah. So that seems to be the, the way that we're in with that thought. So, mm -hmm or where this whole thing is going. I've heard it a couple days ago. It definitely wasn't my idea. I was definitely thinking while watching the show that something was fishy about the whole situation. Cause when mm. it came around baked goods and food, I'm like, that makes sense. They hit that third thing with the cake and the cake, you know, he didn't bring home the cake. And I'm like, that's three things. Now they talked about, mm. you can only yeah. beat me over the head so many times before I start to pick up on it. Mm. Well, a hey, real quick squirrel. Mike in the chat says, I hope MCU brings back uh, Wesley Snipes' as Whistler. Rob, sorry, it's not happening. While I agree that Wesley Snipes is the OG, it, it, like, is the goat <laughs> of Blades. I don't know how a Blade chat got started in the, in the chat room. Uh, it's not happening. He's not coming back. I, I just don't see it happening. Like, I, I would love it. And I, would, I wouldn't I would tell him they couldn't do it, but I just don't see it happening. Um, What else, man? It's possible scary it's I'm so sorry, funny got, there's two of us. We, we, we both got to read the chat so um look man how long do you think this series can go oh shoot uh like to be honest with you it could do you think this the, is a 10-year uh, series like is this the next walking dead like, it seriously? depends on the pace that they tell the story yeah look i fell off a of walking dead like, I want to say it was season four. I didn't watch the new and stuff. It was one of those things that I just, I kind of struggled with. Uh, I watched the first couple and then honestly, once they killed off his friend, I'm like, well, you know, as much as I hated like how his friend crossed him in the show, I wasn't a fan of them getting rid of him. And I don't want them to do that. I, I think that the part of the problem really is with something like walking dead is that, you know, how do you keep reinventing the will and they have to do something to keep the story progressing and walking mm -hmm. dead needs age in the show visibly. And mm -hmm. they kind of did that, you know, the, the zombies were decaying at a certain rate. It was becoming more of a question about survival among cliques and different, you know, uh, factions. So they kind of did that, but what I think this story could have, To me, it's just, what do they do after they get, <laughs> after they deliver the prize, you know? We've seen countless movies to where, was it one of those movies I watched where, oh, was it Clive Owen was delivering the one girl who got pregnant? And, like, she was the only girl that could get pregnant in, like, the last known however many years. And so, like, that was the prize, you know? she had He had to get her to the end to actually save humanity or whatever the case may be. Mm-hmm. This is kind of that same kind of type of story. I mean, it depends on the pace that they tell it, how many seasons it can truly go for. Hmm. Yeah, it's got I legs. Mean, as long as they keep telling good story, I'm in it to the end. You yeah. know, like, 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 they, they, but it's got to be good story. Like, I, I've watched so many series now that have gone on for eight, nine seasons, and about the eighth, nine seasons, it's like uh, maybe you should have just stopped. Like, maybe you peaked type deal and, and maybe this will get to that but there's no way of knowing till we get there hbo you know? is betting on it like they yeah. are they are betting on I it it's definitely it's a sunday are. slot yeah. for them that they are looking for i am of the mindset right now they're holding on to a three-year plan at, at least right now so yeah i expect to see this based on the success of it i expect to see this at least a few years 
Like, yeah. and and I only say a few years because I assume they're going to do one season a year for the next however long. Otherwise, they could pump out fifty episodes and be done with it in two years if they wanted to. You know, I, you know here's the thing: I, I wish more shows would do that. You know, I wish that they would like film for like six months. You know, like how much do you pay an actor? That's true. To work for six months and then like give me like six seasons and you can have that done in two years. I I want to say yes because only because I've been binging shows lately and that's a way better way to watch things. I think it's big things. I haven't had to wait. It's been great. But at the same time, I'm not going to lie. I'm a little excited about having to wait. Like Ooh, maybe it's it because me and Ashley are both into again. it. Oh, yeah. Maybe it's because me and Ashley are both into it. Maybe it's because it's something that like her and I can watch together. And honestly, Summer, was like, hey, have you watched Last of Us yet? And I was like, no, I hadn't watched it yet. She's like, my friends, all my friends at school said I should watch it. And I was like, okay, cool. And I feel like she can watch a show. I don't feel like it's something that's like too adult for her. You know, she's 16. She, yeah, she's at an age. Yeah, she's 16. You're I don't safe. think it's too adult for her. So, like, I might start watching with her, to be truly honest with you. Like, make it a in, every, in su- every yeah. Sunday family thing. Watch, watch, I d- Game, of look, Th- watch uh, Game of Thrones. I had no business watch watching Last Sopranos. Yeah. But I'm telling you right now, like I have memories of like, you know, hanging out, like us watching it all downstairs in the living room when I was, you know, old enough to like watch it. And so like, by all means, like turn it into a thing. Yeah. And, you know, Valerian in the chat does say they do, they did do a 20 year jump. So mm-hmm. if they ever want to do spinoffs, you have 20 years of time there. You can make a show out of And so. my only caveat to that is as someone who fell off of the walking dead, when they started making fear of the walking dead, I reached I the point where I'm like, did. I didn't watch that. Yeah. All right. I already fell off. I started to, but if I fell off that, I was like, ah, eh, it's not good. Yeah. Sorry. I didn't mean to cut you off. <laughs> no, that's, that was my point. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, man, like I'm, I'm, I'm really enjoying the show. It is a new show that I can look forward to. I have a ton of friends that are watching this. I have a ton of people I can talk to about it. My family is invested in it. Like, look, I've got a 16 year old who I know already wants to watch it. So I'll probably watch it with her. And then this got, is water cooler. TV. I've had an almost 13 year old. So like I could literally watch mm-hmm. this with the whole family. Like, I feel like even my 13 year old could probably watch this. She watches anime. And like, I'm if, if you've watched, um, Oh God, what's the, what's the, the anime attack on Titan. I feel like if my, if my 13 year olds watch attack on Titan, she can watch this, you know, uh, it 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 because Attack on Titans got some graphic parts to it and it's pretty violent and it's got some some things so I feel like as a parent a you have to thing. realize that you you have to resensitize what like Hollywood will desensitize for your children when it comes to stuff like that that's what true you have to pay attention to true but your kids also grow up so right. like where where Hollywood was not good for them two years ago they may be okay with now. You know, so Look, like I, Eminem I, didn't make me go kill people, exactly, and like exactly. you know, like it's that kind of stuff. Like, yeah, yeah, I get the yeah. mentality. Yeah, and the thing is, too, I have kids at, the, at this age right now where I've got to start to. They're, they're both young ladies, especially my my summer. She's sixteen. Like, and you know, in a few years, she's gonna be out of the house, maybe, but she'll at least be an adult. Uh, I've, I've got to start treating her like one. She asked me the other day. She was like, well, "What happens and whenever I do this and this and this?" And I was like, "Well, quite honestly, darling, you're gonna be eighteen then." You can do whatever the fuck you want to. I was like, I love you. I was like, but you just got to make right decisions just like, like anyone like, else. You know what? You're absolutely right. My daughter is a student body president, 4.0 GPA, straight A student. I have no problem with what she's doing with her life right now. And she's about to get a bowling scholarship too. So how you like that? What? A bowling scholarship. That's right. We have her bowl every Saturday. Just so you know, anybody out there, check out bowling. Not only is it fun, but my daughter is in a bowling league right now that just put six kids through four years of college for bowling. Where was this when we were kids? We bowled. I agree. I agree, because I love bowling. <coughs> Me and my wife both love bowling. But we're about to put my Man, kids through college just through bowling. So there are tons of avenues out there. Go check it out if you got kids. Check out bowling. It's a fun time, and they can pay for college with it. So just saying. Anyway, back to the last ones. <laughs> no, um... Like I said, I, I'm hyped for it. We got eight more episodes. Uh, yeah. I want to see what's going to happen. Um, let's see. We well, got... this one's an hour and 40 minutes, right? But yeah, the rest of the episodes are not that long, right? It I was a big premiere. So. 
the finale may be a little longer, but I imagine the restaurant will be about 48 to, to, to an hour long. Somewhere if I were a betting man, really they the- probably had a 10 episode contract that they wrapped up one of the episodes into this and kind of like, makes sense, you know, made a better story. Makes sense. Yeah. And um, I don't want filler. So yeah, that works. Yeah. Can't wait for the, Oh, my bad. I guess I should click on this. Can you wait for the Bioshock TV? Absolutely. Like I said, I believe once again that we are on the the cusp of the video game era as far as content goes. I can't wait it takes for over the comic book superhero craze. I, I think it's going to share space. I think there's plenty of room for it. If done well. Yeah. Because traditionally up to this point, not a lot of comic book or not comic book um, video game adaptations have been done very well but at the same time up until marvel did their thing not a lot of comic book that's adaptations the, the, the best point well. so there's always it. a changing point when somebody figures it out and and runs with that model so we'll see what happens uh i can't definitely i'm right there with you i can't wait for nick offerman to show up because he is ron swanson and i'm a humongous ron swanson fan i'm a huge nick offerman fan so yeah anything yeah. is in I'm a, i love it they can, yes. That's a good point. Children can have a lot of nightmares with this content. I mean, but that's look. Children, children can, can have nightmares. I, I have about all adults. sorts of shit. <laughs> I have young adults. I have two teenagers, so I have young adults. Oh, you can't get CT from bowling. That's not true. If you bowl with seriously bad people, you can definitely get CT with a ball to the head. <laughs> yeah, that is true. <laughs> uh, let's hey, see, yeah, first... I love bowling. So, like, but let's not not bowling. I love. Oh. I love the fact that bowling. I want to go bowling. Yeah. When you go to uh, Ross, next time you come hang out with us, man, let's go bowling because we fucking love bowling. I'm at my family, anyone in my family will go bowling anytime. We fucking love bowling. And just so you know, bowling is like a bar. Like me and my wife literally go to the bowling alley that my daughter's bowling a league in, and we can go bowl five, six games a piece and pay 15 bucks. <laughs> you want to get like, full seriously. circle? Yeah. The, the full <laughs> circle. We'll talk about Portugal. Uh, a couple times where I was in Portugal, look, they have a tons of their own. Uh, uh, national holidays and a lot of times that I've been there have been national holidays and like I've been able to like actually leave to go do a whole bunch because like my mission downtime was real small five dollar pitchers everywhere dude <laughs> you want to talk about a bar we nice. would go toe to toe with it. whoever was in the bowling alley five dollar pitchers let's go nice hell yeah and bowling has to have beer that's all there is to it mm-hmm. like you had bowling to beer and you're just got a good time so oh, yeah I only have nightmares of karaoke <laughs> Uh, well, dude, I got nothing else to say, man, to be truly honest with you. We have gone over all these shows. Uh, Last of Us is something that this show is going to be covering for as long as the show is going on, which I have a 10,000 show episode goal. So we're still a long way from, away from there. We're at 165. 10,000, right? 10, buddy. I'm going to go. I'm going to do this till I'm 95 years old. That's I right. Probably stop drinking so much. <laughs> no, no, the cirrhosis of the liver is. Fixable if you get a transfer. So I can still do this in a handicap chair, in a, right. in a wheelchair. I'm right. fine. <laughs> All I need is a phone. I can do it from yeah. do it from my hospital yeah. bed. So, but no, it's been a good time, man. Um, do you have anything else you want to say about Last of Us? Because it's a really fucking good show. I think that fans in the chat room and us are going to have a good time talking about it for, the, for years to come. Yeah. Um hopeful that they give us plenty of content to actually talk about just for the fun of uh whole point of why I like doing the show with you and Sarah is the simple fact that I love talking about shit and I love talking about it with people who are like-minded anyone in the chat room bringing everything you got. Cause I'm all about how that conversation goes. I want this show to bring the conversation same way that, uh, you know, game of Thrones did and, um, dude, just like anything, you know, like I love yeah. good stuff. This show is modeled after the C3 Panthers podcast. It is meant to be a group of friends who just saw something and want to talk about it. And that's what it is. And that's what we try to make it like. And we try to incorporate the chat room. We love you guys being in here. White Talk Espresso, Valeria, and y'all have been here all night. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Everybody else, if you're not in your chatting, hit the like, hit the subscribe. Because we're here every week doing this kind of stuff. And we definitely have at least one show to cover for the next few weeks. But we always have stuff to cover because there's always stuff coming out. Um, we but I got nothing Card else. And Mandalorian. I mean, we got I'm a lot of shows you, dude, and movies. Like it's all dude, coming. There is always, 
always something to cover. Even if there is no new show out, we will watch an old movie. I have a whole backlog of them. Stargate, yeah. Power Rangers, like all, Fifth Element, all kinds of stuff. You know, th- there's all kinds of stuff we can <coughs> watch and review and have a good time. So come check us out. We're here at live every night, every Friday at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Unless life hits us. You know, we are all adults and we have things that come up. Sometimes we push the show to a later date. Sometimes we have to take a break on the week. I'll try to let you know, but generally we're here every Friday, 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on YouTube. We're talking about all this good stuff. I got Ross and Sarah with me. Sarah is in Atlantic City right now, probably winning a ton of money. I hope she is at least. Um, So she has enough lead built up. Yeah, like I, I'll, I'll take it out of leave. She has enough leave built up that, you know, it worked. I could give her off. So, <laughs> but it's a really good time. Ross, where can they find you at if they want to talk? Right here. This is the, this is the only place. Like, Aki. I don't do anything. I don't go anywhere. Like, this this is the only place right here. There you go. And honestly, you can only find me here or at the Bat Daddy Fits 2 on Twitter. That's my only source of social media. Um, it's only for the show. Check out at SES Podcast 1 on podcast. On, on podcast. GCS on Twitter. Podcast. Did I say SES? Uh, you said SES. Oh my Here we gosh, are living out the, goodness the golden gracious, era. Man. Yeah, that, <laughs> that was a flashback. It's That was the 2003 flashback. Uh, GCS Podcast 1 uh, on Twitter. That's the show handle. Like I said, live every Friday. Like, subscribe, share, tell a friend. Seriously, we love having people in the chat room. We want to talk about what y'all want to talk about. You make the show. Tell your friends to come in and talk about things they like to talk about. Make suggestions for shows we like to watch. Me and Ross try to take in a lot of media content. So if you have something you really, really think we should watch, give us a, a suggestion, you know, and we'll try to check it out. But uh, seriously, I really appreciate everybody being on here. Um, Valerian said this podcast is gold. Man, I really do appreciate it, uh, especially coming from, you know, internationally. That's really awesome. I don't know what time it is where you're at, but uh, it's really cool that you're here. Tell your friends. Everybody come on every Friday. Ross, I'm ready to get out of here. Uh, I'm not sure. I'm, I'm, I, time zones in my mind right now. Oh, I said, uh, where did I go? I'll be I, I love the Azores, the islands that, that Portugal owns, uh, right there in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean, but all up and down the coast, all over the place in Portugal. Uh, yeah. I just got my passport. I'm looking for a place to vacation next summer. So, oh, bro, I got you a list, man. There you go. Give me a list. But, uh, Ross, let's get out of here, man. And, folks, until next week. All I can say is...